You will write down on this lamb's skin the word, I, Magus. N nothing else, Master? Nothing else. Uh, how, how do you spell a, a Magus? That is part of the test. What will, what will happen if we get it right, Master? If you have the gift, something will happen. If not, nothing. Hmm. Did he seriously cross it out? I'm a mad magic to learn to spell. Oh, I'm done. I'm done. What happens now? <laughs> For you, nothing. But I, but I wrote as just as good as him. Have you learned nothing, boy? A word of magic must be written perfectly, spelled correctly, the first time. You are not writing only with lamb's blood, but with your own blood. The magic flows through you and into the pen and from thence onto the scroll. <laughs> oh, bugger it! Well done, John. I, 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 I have it! Gods of magic, help me. I will dedicate my life to you. I will serve you always. I will bring glory to your name. Help me. Please help me. Do you know who we are? You pray to us, yet many speak our names with their lips only, not their hearts. Do you truly believe in us? You came to me, didn't you? You are very young. Do you understand the promise you have made to us? The promise to worship us and glorify our names? To do so will go against the beliefs of many and may put you in mortal danger. I understand. Are you prepared to make the sacrifices we will require of you? I am prepared. You do not understand. And if you could foresee what will be asked of you in the future, you would run from this place and never come back. Still, we have watched you and we have been impressed with you. We grant your request on one condition. Remember always that you have seen us and spoken to us. Never deny your faith in us, or we will deny you. Are you ill, Raceland? Shut up. I... Magus. Pre-recorded in a second floor guest room filled with tall ales and taller tales. Join a group of grown men intent on discussing the intricacies of fantasy and science fiction. Tim Gilbert Media presents... Don't just that, that we! we. <laughs> <laughs> I think a battle action. Hello all you fans of Goblin Ball, Kender Keep Away, and Thane Beneath the Mountain. This is the Dungeons and Dweebs podcast, episode 38, Dragonlands, The Soul Forge, part one. I'm your host, Bob, and brothers and sisters, if you will indulge me a brief sermon. Belzor appeared to me in a dream last night, and for those of you here in Solace, you all are going to know soon why Belzor brought us here. Belzor has given us a woman who is not afraid to fight. We have a priestess people think is crazy. They call her crazy, but she's making treaties. She's doing all the things to try to solve the world's problems. Then Belzor has put her on Grin. I repeat, Belzor spoke to me the other night, 
And he said, I put the wheel of Judith on earth to give you time, you brothers and sisters of the temple. Time to get ready, for the hour of judgment is nigh at hand. Bruh. <laughs> but I'm not alone. Across the table from me, he's added a splash of brandy to his tar bean tea. He's got a purple mark on his neck he says was given to him by a girl in town named Weird Megan. <laughs> <laughs> and his aged mother is Mistress sitting, Megan. <laughs> his aged mother is sitting in the over there in the corner in a rocking chair, quietly muttering to no one in particular, My son's famous the world over. He's a podcaster, <laughs> don't you know? It's Luke. <laughs> Oh, ladies and gentlemen, and everything in between, it is summertime, and you know what Woo! that means? Dragonlance on the Dungeons and Dweebs podcast. Time to Lance Harder! Yeah, yeah. the Summer of Lance 3. Lance, Lance Harder! Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, yeah, you know, it's summertime, you know, nothing feels more right <coughs> these days than little Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman in the summertime. It goes good together like a lime and Corona. <laughs> <laughs> Why and Hickman? Where's the Ronnie Dew, Bob? Where's yeah, the Ronnie yeah. Dew? Oh yeah, I get Be because this isn't Weiss and Hickman. Yeah, oh, it's just yes. it's, it's just Weiss. Just Weiss. So instead of instead of the you know that wonderful Ronnie Dew, he he just switched it up to a crumb. <laughs> yes, summary. Well, summary. Hey, it's summary. Why don't we? But not a full summary. It's it's not it's not a thick tome that we must journey through, but it is an adventure. So let's kick things off. Across the table from me now. <laughs> <laughs> it was Paul. Paul did this. Paul sat in my chair. Did I? You I know, can it move. Doesn't, it doesn't. I can it move. Doesn't matter. Nobody Before can see us, so we can lie. <laughs> and, and yet, and yet here you we are. And yet here we are. <laughs> and now, this is totally yeah. derailed. Anything I was going to say, it's clawed. <laughs> <though. laughs> Greetings and salutations, my young apprentices. Your old uncle Clob is continuing to enjoy his North American summer. Lots of grilling, drinking, bonfire, and fishing, and the occasional carousing with the lovely maidens of the north. <laughs> Reminds me of the summer when I was about 17 and I spent wandering the countryside selling my sword and enjoying the freedom of the road. Most of that summer I spent in the company of a raven-haired beauty who shared my battles and my bed. <laughs> oh, the things that young warrior woman taught me about both my swords. <laughs> There it is. Yep. We were inseparable for Keep a time away. until that god <laughs> half elf showed up. <laughs> and elves. <laughs> anyway, next to me, his test at the tower consisted of eating a hundred cheeseburgers and then not waiting a half an hour to go swimming. <laughs> the Baba to my Dr. Ivan Zahn, the Bradley Hamilton to my Jeff Spicoli, ah. the man who never yes. has a plan. Paul, how are you this evening? I am doing wonderful, <laughs> and you are correct. You should probably wait a little while before you uh, go swimming after eating. It does not feel fun when you're sinking slowly to the bottom. <laughs> uh, <laughs> turns out you can't breathe water. It's terrible. Uh, I'm doing pretty well. It's a beautiful summer. It's fantastic getting out there, enjoying the sun, swimming, biking, all the terrible things that are Are you painful. wearing sunscreen? Uh, a little bit, yeah. A little bit. Uh, you got to put on that golden colored stuff to protect you from the fireball. Yeah, you know, the fireball will hurt you. <laughs> At least before the fireball doesn't go up, I don't randomly hear a Shrek in the background. Oh, yeah, because that's a light spell. You wouldn't hear Shrek if it was a fireball. What was the fire? Oh, okay. Well, what was the fireball words? I don't remember. Fireball. Fireball. <laughs> remember? Fizzbin? Fireball? Was what? that literally all he said? What was... were those words again? <laughs> fire fairies? Wait, that's and right before, And right before it, and right before you... You see the fireball, you hear the do 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 fireball. Don't you bring Mr. Worldwide into this. I will say though, it is great to be back in the Dragonlance universe. It's true. And it's also great to be back in the studio. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you guys did Rama and I wasn't on it and I got to listen to this podcast like I wasn't a part of it. It was cool. It was cool. Yeah. Were you yelling at us though where you're like, no, that's not what that means. Who engineered this schlock? No, you you said one thing about computers and I was kind of like, why do you know that? Club. I'm pointing in, in real what, life. What, what, I don't what did I say? I, I don't remember. I just remember like you saying something like, why do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're, we're not here to talk about Rama. Rama? Rama. We're here to talk about the Soul Forge. Well, I tell you what, before we get into that, we have to do some tavern talk. We got some responses from stuff online. Right Luke, on. since you weren't done the last episode, 
You have to buy this round. All Ooh. right, I'll go up to the fridge. I was in a relationship no, I swear with, you, with the woman with the blue voice. dragon. She brought me up to her room Boy, last did night. she have good Where's time. my corn purse? Why don't you fellas fall in here my couch? I'll show you how my glory is good. What'll it be, boys? Tavern talk. All right. Well, we're here at the end of the last home, just with our sodden, trodden boots. Do you smell those potatoes? They're spicy. Um, do you see Tika? This new set of dark ale is phenomenal. <laughs> Tika's over there, but she's like 12. It's kind of yeah, weird. Know, it's, it's kind of weird, kind of weird <laughs> so it's throwing me off a little bit. Um, but here we are. Uh, this is Tavern Talk, the portion of the sh show where we go around for about, you know, we'd like to say 20 minutes, but it's going to be realistically 35. I haven't been on in a while. I've got a lot to talk about. I was going to say, it depends, <laughs> on how long, it depends on how far we get derailed. That's yes. true. De yeah. So we're going to just go around and give uh, some things that are happening in our lives, nerd-wise, book-wise, whatever. Um, so if you're looking to listen to Soul Forge stuff and just want to skip all this, it's probably about 30 minutes in the future. Ish. Ish. Yeah. Okay. Well, Hard-ish. So Luke, how has your nerd month been? Great. Um... Well, Bob, I switched out two mixers and a microphone because all of our stuff is crapping the bed right now. <laughs> yes, so, it is. So if you're noticing the audio change from the beginning of the episode from, to right now... From when I just asked Luke how his week had been, it's because <laughs> everything went to hell right there. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is usually, you know, just a couple hour process is swiftly turning into a full night. Oh, God. Um, anyway... <laughs> so we have a, we have a new microphone going right have, now. Yeah, us, I just the old kinda, microphone died. Yeah, pulled right. this one out of my butt, and I guess it sounds a lot better. Sounds much it works. Better. Yeah, Way to go, Yeti. Yeah, yeah. Hey, not a sponsor. Anyway, you uh, could be. but they could be. Yeah, Yeti. They you saved our butts, so thank you, Yeti. Yeah. So um, is that the same Yeti that makes like the coolers? I don't know. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, 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 com the company is blue, and this is the Yeti microphone. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, That's how they get away with it. <laughs> so this Yeti. month, uh, I uh, Stranger Things three. No spoilers. Absolutely not. It has not been long enough for me to want to spoil anything. Um, so this was... I was under the impression that this was supposed to be the last four, season. Four is going to be the last. I, yeah. And that's... Okay, I, all I'm going to say is when you get to the last episode, stick around. There's an after credits thing. Mm. Oh, they did an after, after credits thing? And they did. After credits thing? That surprises so, me. Stranger Things usually does. Okay. okay. So I watched the entire thing as well with, with my wife. Mm. Um, not spoilery... Thoughts? Non-spoiler um, thoughts? Okay, um, that, the ending of that, mm -hmm. I wanted to stand up and applaud. Yep. That was amazing. That is how wow. series seasons should end. Yeah, I would say um, the, the season as a whole for me, uh, I really liked it. I mean, 80s nostalgia mm -hmm. always gets me. There was parts of it that made me go, oh man, like really? Oh yeah. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> But uh, overall, I, I think season three way better yeah. than season two. Yeah, for sure. Um, for sure. The, the only thing that I, I I caught myself thinking was like, like okay, so like they're being invaded again. Why are they all like hiding it from each other and like being that? That is the only thing. But like I don't know. Like once I thought about yeah. it a little bit more, it made more sense that yeah. okay, yeah. It's it's kind of crazy in the first place that any of this is happening. Right. And I just I don't Clob, you said you were watching it? I haven't started it yet. You haven't okay. started it. I have it ready seen... I have it ready to go. I've seen one and two. You've seen one and two. Yeah. Yeah. Paul, any of it? I haven't seen any of it Doesn't yet. Doesn't surprise Standard me. me. You uh, can spoil away. Uh, I don't actually care. <laughs> but but to me, I, I our audience would it just came out last week. We no, all... I mean like for one and two. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, we, don't spoil three. My wife and I talked about this a lot as well, because that was a, our thing as well. That okay, after everything they went through, everybody in the town, all of the people kind of act like a lot of this never happened. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that's just the nature of the beast, right? Like when you're you're going for season three, what do you you almost have to just reset the mm -hmm. clock on yeah. the town, otherwise there'd be too much knowledge in that town. What I Very what true. the Very thing true. that I had the most trouble with what what was going on in the mall and what was oh, under okay. the mall. Um, <laughs> I'm like, this is crazy. I get they're going for that 80s camp because yeah. that is 80s. Oh, and, that, and that, that's that's why I liked it. Oh yeah, and no, I agree. <laughs> okay, and I, I think there should be a game. I'm sure there is where you just go through and look at the homages to things. From other movies from the mm -hmm. '80s. I mean, the Aliens Three. There is almost like a shot. Oh yeah, where wow. he's like the thing is like in her face. Yeah, I mean yep. it's it's Ripley. Yeah, um, there is so much stuff going on from the Blob, like '50s monster movies. That, I, yeah, that was exactly it what is, I was thinking. I'm like, this, Winona this, Ryder was in Alien Resurrection. Oh yeah, that's what <laughs> she. Yes, she plays the robot. She yep. plays the android in Alien oh, Resurrection. Oh my god. <laughs> yep. 
And she's. I didn't remember that at all. Yeah. No. It, oh. it. There is so much. There's parts of it where it's it's just almost scene for scene from other movies, but it's great. Man. Yeah. Even me. Like I. I like a lot of 80s things, but it's not as ingrained in my memory. Right. So, like, when I'm going back and I'm watching this, I just think it's cool. I really like everything that's going on. Mm-hmm. Especially, like, you know, the removal of cell phones really oh, yeah. makes any horror movie better. Wait. There was a time before cell phones. <laughs> I know. We were alive I in know, Nepal. I know. I actually was. I <laughs> we're not the, that old. I remember <laughs> the big old uh, we're not satellite that one that you yeah. had to... Yeah, yeah, bag phones. I had the bag, bag phone. I had a bag phone. Bag phone. I, I, I remember pay phones. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. So that's why you saw pay phone. That was how I got a ride home from school. You'd do a collect call and just say, yes. hey, uh, will you, me. And will, then will, up. Will, will you accept a collect call from practices over? Come pick me up. <laughs> and then you hang up. That's how you get a free. Uh, I know exactly what yeah, you're talking exactly. about. Exactly. So yeah, I, I will, I will absolutely stand like I I did not like shed any manly tears at the end of um, season three, but I could have. Like it, yeah. it was, it was, it just it punched me right in the childhood at the end. Mm-hmm. No. It was so, it was so real. It was so good. It was such a. It. I, I can't. I, I don't want to like. I feel like yeah, I'm hyping. It. Don't let my hype influence you, Clob, when you go to watch it. Oh, just, no, I, just take it in. Um, Clob, watch it. We'll do a, a more spoilery review maybe uh, down the road. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I severely enjoyed the first two. Second like, generation. Season, second so. generation, we'll, we'll, uh, yeah. we'll do that. Uh, that, um, more Netflix. Uh, <laughs> Jessica Jones, the final season of that, is uh, it's out now. I binged through that. It's, what is it, 12 episodes? So uh, Stranger Things is only eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then, like, I'm watching Jessica Jones, and, like, the way that show is kind of structured, there's always, like, more than one thing going on. Yes. Which is kind of weird. So, like, I'm, I'm waiting for it to end at any moment. Mm-hmm. And then I finally went, like, okay, how many episodes are there? I'm like, oh, 12. I'm like, oh, thank God. Like, I was just going to say. That season, it, it wrapped up good. It still kind of left it open-ended, which makes no sense to me, because I think they knew. Well, maybe is they didn't. Done? Maybe, yeah, because well, uh, it's done Marvel, on Netflix. And I, I don't. Are all the Marvel or all Mar- Marvel are going over to Disney? I can't yeah. see. Uh, I can't see Marvel and Disney continuing that because it's so gritty and adult. Hmm. I just. I, I can't. Well, but uh, I guess you know. You know, Infinity War and Endgame were pretty adult. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is is I Marvel agree. doing the pay to stream monthly yep. thing? Yeah. Oh, crap. Well, Disney is. Disney is. Yeah. Disney, Marvel. Yeah. I hear it's and not going to be super expensive. Is it only like six something? I mean, still, so still I, I already have like. four. Four. Yeah, no, I agree. Hulu, I agree. Amazon, you, there's so many different yeah. ones now. CBS is even doing their own CBS thing. CBS is doing their own. Um, See, so yeah, I that it, it was. Uh, I, I liked three. Uh, season one of Jessica Jones is the best. It will always be the best. Two was kind of weak. Three is better than two. Okay, good. I like. I like to hear that because I want to watch because mm-hmm. that's one the, of the the, the, ones the bad guy in too. three is su- like super good. Um, so I, I, those little Netflix binges, um, I'm going to cover this just a little bit because uh, Neil, a uh, friend of the show, a friend of the show, other fourth chair, got me, got me into chair. this. Guy on the show. Um, MTG Arena. It's a free computer game where you can play Magic the Gathering. Uh-huh. And it's amazing to have a free resource to scratch that Magic the Gathering itch. Right, right. Um, it kind of, I don't know, like when I first started playing, I... I played five matches online against people. My first four, I just steamrolled everybody, and I'm like, okay, well, maybe, you know, I'm low level. Maybe it's trying to figure out where I am. And, like, because I played a lot in person. Right. Like, I mean, all of us around the table. Yeah, we have. played a lot. Yep. So, and then eventually I got to my fifth match, and that one, like, seriously took, like, 45 minutes one on one. It was just this back and forth, crazy battle. I, I'd recommend it to anybody who's into Magic the Gathering, it's not that uh, demanding of a game. Where you could, you know, you could play it on a laptop or whatever. Um, but it's, it's been a good time. Um, and it's free to download, right? And I'm sorry, I'm just kind of, I haven't been on in a while, so I'm kind of bogarting a lot. <laughs> uh, Tavern <laughs> Talk. I uh, recommend both those Netflix series, MTG Arena, awesome. Um, on another note, on our YouTube channel, I know, Paul, you brought up a little bit of it, about it last yes. episode. Um, we got some Minecraft nice. stuff coming out. Also, in celebration of... Uh, the Summer of Lance 3, <laughs> we are re-releasing our original trilogy on YouTube. Uh, the uh, the intros. The, right. No, not the intros, just the full episodes. 
Oh, really? Oh, the entire so episode's going on a... Right hand not knowing what left hand is doing. All right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the... <clears throat> the hardest part about all this is like rendering a three hour video. Like yep. my computer just sits. <laughs> <laughs> you just like start it at night and just kind of go to bed. Uh, yeah, so we got uh, Minecraft videos coming out. We got the uh, re release of our original um, Dragonlance trilogy re releasing on YouTube, as mm-hmm. well as the intros from last summer when we did the Twins trilogy. Yeah. This is a uh, head on over, uh, go on go on to YouTube.com, search Dungeons and Dweebs. We don't have our own URL yet because our channel is so small. But right. hoping to like kind of keep pumping out content there. But anyway, that's about all I got like 20 minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all right, you fixed the mic. Yeah, yeah. true. That, <laughs> true. Yeah, you so can you talk can as whatever. long as you want because now they can hear you. Now they yeah. can hear us. <laughs> oh, and, sorry. One one little more thing. <laughs> Kate Colombo. <laughs> just, one, just, 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 just one more thing. I don't understand that reference. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, no, well, that I get it. Reference. I get it, yeah. Um, other fourth chair, Neil, he had brought us a cake to celebrate. This is This month... Is uh, yes. our podcast is two full years old? Oh my god, we're gosh. two years old, guys! Please. Happy birthday! Happy yeah. birthday, Aww. Dungeons and Dweebs! You brought us a cake. We're gonna enjoy that. Thank you, Neil, for stopping by. He actually wanted to be here for it, but he's out of town, yeah. and we kind of schedule things super last minute because yeah. it's us. Yeah, thanks, Neil, for the cake. We appreciate it, man. Yeah, Clob, sorry. Go on. <laughs> You're fine because I'm super short. Oh, yeah. good. Hey, kids. <laughs> uh, you don't do that in this. I, I, I do that everywhere. Okay. Um, that's really. Hold on, you do that everywhere. That's, that's yes, I do. I do that. actually. Like out of your car, do you it's, just it's, go? Hey, it's, hey, like kids, jo- it's like hey, kids. It's like Joey from Friends. It's my how. It's my how you doing. <laughs> <laughs> Did you understand that reference? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, the, really, the only thing that I'm going to talk about, because really, like I said in my intro, what I've been doing is I've been outside a lot. I've been yeah. doing some fishing. I've been doing some boating. I've um, I work at a bar during the summer when we're not. In the school year, um, that's really what I've been doing most of my my summer. And during my, the school year, you just live at the bar because right. all teachers do. <laughs> <laughs> Not <laughs> wrong. I know. <laughs> to, to be fair, and if you know me, you realize that I really don't work for money. Oh. I work for beer. <laughs> <laughs> that's one heck, all, of, one heck of a trade-off, buddy. Because it all goes back. It all goes back towards my tab, anyway. Um, <laughs> I'm that guy. Uh, oh, you need some help this weekend? Great! I need a six-pack. Um, <laughs> anyways, the big one, the one big nerd thing I'm going to talk about. I want to talk about is I want to talk about Good Omens on Amazon Prime. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, really good I wanted to watch that. Good o- it's David Tennant and yes. uh, Michael Sheen, and they're an angel and a demon, and God has given up on us and is going to let the angels fight out the war to end the world, <laughs> and these two guys try to stop it. Right. And they were, um, my, and it goes all the way from the Garden of Eden to present day. That's cool. And these guys have known each other and been angels on earth, all, or been an angel and a demon on earth, all the way from the Garden of Eden. <laughs> To the present day, That's and are actually like friends, mm-hmm. yeah. and like, but like neither side knows they're friends. <laughs> but they actually like get together and have coffee and stuff and talk about life. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, but, you talk about life, then you know later on you go kill each other. But yeah, but God, the whole premise is God has given up. It's going to be Armageddon. God's given up. He's going to let the angels and the de- and the fallen angels fight it out and end the world because yeah. she's just done. Yeah. Ah. Frances McDermott plays is the voice of God, and she's kind of the narrator for the mm-hmm. whole thing, and she uh-huh. does very well. But it is. Awesome! Oh, it is so well done. Uh-huh. It is so cool uh, the way they fi- the way they bring in the uh, Judo Christian uh, mm. f- uh, theology and into everything, and cool. it's actually very you know very much Paradise Lost and you know wow. all of the stuff that they bring in with the angels and the demons cool. and the garden and I'm gonna check it out. All the things for <laughs> human beings, and it's hilarious <laughs> because it's these two. You can tell that. Um, Sheen and Tennant are having so much fun playing being, being playing controls. these parts yeah. and, and, and doing these roles. That's cool. And it's very, very cool. I highly recommend it. It was it's actually been the source of a huge amount of controversy online if you follow about if you follow <laughs> some Really? Yes. Yep. Because there's a huge Christian petition out there uh-huh. to have Netflix cancel good omens. 
Oh, really? The problem is... It's not on Netflix. It's not on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> Amazon, hey, Netflix, Netflix wholeheartedly said, yeah, we will totally cancel. We yeah, we'll, we'll, do cancel we'll, do all, we'll do everything in our power. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, you can just, you can feel this, the scathing, you stupid SOBs uh, coming, <laughs> coming from Netflix and Amazon's just roaring. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, I think Amazon even came But yeah, it's a big thing like, because it's, 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 it, it, it's, you know, it's not teaching children the correct things about the religion and actually... Actually, if you read the religion and do a lot of the theo- theological reading, which I've done, and you know, go into like the poetry of Milton, and you know, yeah. it actually follows what your book <laughs> says. <laughs> I'm gonna watch this. I gotta watch um, this. But but it is so. But it is very good. Um, other than that, I just have one more thing that I want to do with my portion of the tavern time. Ooh, um, I have been bopping in and out of Facebook a little bit. Yeah. Over, over the past week or so, and I just want to say, <laughs> hi, Kayla. <laughs> Paul, what have you been up to? <laughs> uh, personally, it's been a lot of working, and then also Netflix, things like that, some games. Uh, I just started a new job as an EMT some uh, up around here, so that's fun. But otherwise, uh, I want to wholeheartedly talk about a show that I started to watch that I know, Luke, you would enjoy. Bob, you probably... Actually, I think everybody here probably would. It's uh, Love, Death, and Robots. Ooh. It's... A very, they're just digital shorts. They range from like 10 to 20 minutes, all about just different things. There's one episode of just robots t- have had the world now and they're touring former humanity. They're like, oh, look, here's a cafe, all, all this stuff hmm. that's interesting. Then there's a, another interesting one, very Lovecraft ish, where they get lost in space. And oh, yeah. it's, I don't know, it's definitely something that if you want kind of a mind trip for 20 minutes, there you go. I, will, I would highly recommend it. I've seen so far only two of the episodes. Uh, it was actually Luke, one of uh, somebody that works with you, Marcus, that uh, oh. pointed it out to me. He was like, "Hey, shout out, Marcus! Yeah, you should watch this." I was like, eh, "All right." I'll, so I turned it on, and it was it was fantastic. Wholeheartedly cool. would recommend it. Wow. Not for kids, definitely for adults. But it was it was really good. Oh, and cool. then uh, game that came out that was on Steam sales. Uh, Civ Six. All right, ah, Sid Meier. Yes, I love the Civ games. They are always a good time, good time sink. Sometimes too much time. Mm. Uh, sometimes it's just what, n- next turn I'll, I'll be done. N- n- nope, n- n- next turn I'll be done. No, you go all the way through until you win that, nuclear supremacy. That could take forever. <laughs> so it is a great game if you enjoy those types of games. Sid Meier uh, is sixty five. 65? Yeah. Same birthday as me. We we had a conversation off air when you brought up Civ 6 about how old is Sid Meier? Because since uh, I was no, You a said kid, 50. I, I said probably probably north of that. I thought, yeah. yeah, in his 50s. I was wrong. He's 65. He... From Canada. From Feb- Canada. Feb- February huh? 24th. Yep. Great birthday. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's a great game. They've, they've just continued mm. to improve on it. I've heard very good things. Yeah. Yeah. Wholeheartedly cool. enjoy it, Bob. What about you? Well, I've been doing some reading. One of uh, one of our listeners, when we were doing the Dune stuff, had on one of the ads had said it'd be better if all of these. I had a bunch of like Dune books, right? Like mm-hmm. Children of Dune, Dune Messiah, and stuff. And he said just add of gore after all of those, right? Because there's an author named John Norman who wrote this series of, I think there's 33, 35 books. Wow. That are the the gore novels, right? And I'm like, I have heard of this gore stuff. So on the Dune podcast, I said, I'm going to go and I'm going to read some of these gore things because I've looked it up on the show and we read the Wikipedia entry says, like, this series has been, like, uh, really under fire because of its, like, depiction of women as being, like, subservient and whatever and weird sexual acts and stuff. I'm like... So I'm going to check this out. <laughs> so that perked your interest. So I'm going. How's life on the compound again? <laughs> well, there's a lot of chains and whips now. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yikes. So here's the thing. I have only read the first two. So I cannot speak to the series as a whole. And I've heard that it started out as a fairly legit, what they call planet and sandal fantasy. Right? So... Okay. Uh, most of our listeners have, yeah. if you haven't read Gore, probably are aware of John Carter of Mars. Yes. Yes. So John Carter of Mars is very much the like, you know, 
the story, who cares how they get to the planet? It's like, I fell asleep in a cave and I woke up on Barzoom, right? Like, <laughs> like it doesn't <laughs> it matter. It works like a charm. Yeah, it works, it works like, a, like charm. a charm. None of this matters. And I actually am a huge fan of, you know, like like I've said many John times, Carter of Mars John really Carter of yeah. Mars. I love those series. I love that kind of pulp stuff. And so I'm like, okay, sword. And, and then I, I said I read that book, King Dragon by mm-hmm. Offit, and that was kind of a sword and set, uh planet book i really like that one so i'm like okay i'll try out gore and see what's going on the first two i actually really enjoyed i heard (laughs) that they get weirder as it goes down and it's created don't do this kids (laughs) but if you go onto youtube and search gorian community or or like gorian uh so there's a gorian community out there of people who like to role play kind of it really kind of fed into the whole bondage I was gonna say, Lifestyle. I feel like no matter what you search, yeah. <laughs> no matter what you search, Gore, Gorian, you're gonna get right. some shady. And whereas a lot of times I think that culture, like we're in now in this modern culture where it's it's okay, like any of that kind of stuff, as long as both parties are like okay or at the same level. Yeah. Like yeah. all that's whatever. Yeah. Um and I think that's how the Gorian it seems to be how the Gorian community runs itself. Not like I've done a deep dive into looking into that. I like I don't I was know, like, man. You I'm, talked about chains and whips. I'm earlier. turning this off. But um from reading the book, very mild. It is no different than Conan or oh. John Carter of Mars. Anything from the time where basically you have this. It's basically the, your main character uh, goes camping, gets abducted by aliens. Turns out there's these insectoid like priests uh, that yes. run the planet. Probing. Right? Gore is a planet that is on the opposite side of the sun that rotates at the exact same you know, okay. orbit oh, as us. Mega yes. Earth. Yeah, so we never know it's there. Um, and and it's populated, their population is controlled. Um, the priests, the king priests, do not allow technology to go beyond kind of medieval level, mm. right? Okay. And But there definitely is an aspect to where, you know, that like women, there's a slave market. It tends to be heavily geared towards like, Hot sexual slaves, right? Mainly Same. women, right? And there's this weird, Wait, like, no, no, not slaves. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, and and even I would say the first book plays in where the main girl is like aristocracy. She tries to act all haughty, hoity-toity, and by the end, you know, their trek through the wild wastes, she's ready to submit to the man, right? So there is definitely this whole. Not progressive in a feminine feminist sense. Uh, okay, when was it written though? That seventies, okay. early seventies, or no, late sixties. I think those first few were like sixty eight, sixty nine, okay. and then into the seventies. And that kind of trope w- is big during that time yeah. period of where the man is like super muscular and brutish, and the woman is just kind of fawning all over. You know, like comic books were the same way, and you know. So I don't know that it goes anything beyond what was. Of the time, I hear it does though. I hear the series does take okay. more of a dive. I don't know. I I won a lot of the books on eBay, so I've got the first seventeen gore books. <laughs> I don't know how far down the rabbit hole oh, you and eBay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love feel it. for your wife. <laughs> I love it. So we'll see how far down the rabbit hole I go with gore. But the first two I actually really like. If you like John Carter Mars, you like Conan. You gotta be reading some gore. All right. Yeah. I'll I add it to my list. Highly recommend it. John Carter's great. Yeah. If you like John Carter, uh, try out gore. At least that first book. I think you'll really enjoy it. So, and then after. In fact, it's so close, it's almost a ripoff. Okay. <laughs> then soon you'll see me just wearing those leather pants and. All of a sudden, have, man, I want to with a whip. I want to. I, I want to see you in some strappy sandals. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, on Facebook, uh, I, you know, we I should, don't. Feet <laughs> <laughs> gross me out. We've had some. Hey, uh, I want to bring this up now. We if we have kind of a closed community on Facebook, or that people can't post on our Facebook page, but you can make a post, we can post it. Yes, we have to approve it. Uh, we're just kind of trying to stay ahead of the curve of somebody posting something racist. Yeah, <laughs> or something. Because internet, you know? Yeah, right, yeah. The internet is... Well, the, dun- the Dungeons and Dweeb guys are Trump backers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by why I didn't bring this up. If you're wondering why my intro was so long... 
All I did was I took a a speech that Jim old Jim Baker did. You know Jim Baker? <laughs> oh yes. To oh, Jim like, and Tammy like, like Faye Baker. Food bucket Jim Baker. Wow. Yeah. So I can't I can't get over the fact that he's out of prison and he's like back on Angel Network, like hawking some sort of survive the no, apocalypse no, 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 food. No, I tell you what, the Lord really came to me this time. Yeah. So <laughs> I, well, I can't believe. Okay, first of all, that anybody. That they would let him. Yes. Like, that's not a violation of his parole. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and that anybody's and, listening and, to him And anymore. be, yeah, that anybody, like, believes him. I, I actually heard a program about people that, like, send thing, send money to those things, and it is just terrible. They, oh, they prey on all oh, yeah. of the people. Oh, yeah. On the people that are down, that are just looking for that little bit of hope and are willing to do anything for that it's hope. Terrible. I was oh, just yeah. like, mm-hmm. terrible. holy yeah. cow. Jim and Tammy Faye, I remember them a lot as a kid because I'd wake up, I think Sunday morning there was still cartoons on like 6 o'clock. Mm-hmm. There was like, because I only had network and I want to say there was a few cartoons at 6 o'clock and they'd be on at about the same time trying to bumper out my cartoons. So I'd catch, End of the world is I'd, coming! I'd catch, Those cartoons, get rid of them! Well, they were not preaching that the talking, end of the world. That yeah. talking dog is going to eat your soul. Yeah, they weren't preaching the end of the world so much as give us money and then you can get a timeshare in this like super community. Just, just give us a time and all of your problems will go away. No, if, they were if... building one in like Florida. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, but uh, that's what they got in a lot of problems Because you know, that's what Jesus would do is have a gated community. <laughs> in Florida. No, in Florida. <laughs> has gates. So. But anyway, the whole point there was is I took he, something he had said on his show now um, so if you go back and listen to what my intro said and replace all of all of the uh, Belzor with God mm-hmm. and replace all of uh, Widow Judith with Donald Trump, oh my God. <laughs> that is what he said. Wow. You're kidding! I am not kidding. Oh my God, that is, <laughs> that is. I was. I honestly was wondering where you were going. You're like, like, yeah, because you're like, why is this so freaking long? I'm like, I'm like, yeah. Where, where's the punchline going to be here? Where's yeah. the punchline? And then you just end it. It's just all, that's all, the punchline. All, 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 all set up, no punchline. Yeah, yeah. Well, there, there it is. 30 there, minutes later. 30 minutes later, it's a slow <laughs> it's a burn. burn. It's a slow burn. Chirac. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there you go. Uh, oh, man. Um, but, yeah, so on Facebook. But please. Eddie, on Facebook, Justin is great about posting stuff that then I can share Shout out. Shout out Justin. Justin is awesome. Again, maybe like ghost fifth chair. Um, he he threw up a great link to an article from Tor about how Dragonlance launched my lifelong love of fantasy. Lots of traction on that. So go give that a read. We had some you know responses to that. Chad said, it was the same for me. I read Dragons of Autumn Twilight and was hooked. They all had a great balance between action, adventure, magic, both arcane and divine, storytelling and uniqueness. Uh, you had Kayla said, I love this podcast. <laughs> Thank you, Kayla. <laughs> Pete was very quick to chime in and respond. Who? Oh, <laughs> Clob. Clob was very quick to chime in and respond. That's okay. Well, on his it's personal on account. I was going to say, I, I was gonna say on Facebook, <laughs> yeah. I, on Facebook yeah, I jumped we, in on my yeah, I, You know what? I, I have to now. I kind of just let the walls uh, yeah, down. Yeah, whatever. whatever. You guys okay. know who we are. Yeah. I just don't ever come at me, bro. Facebook. Yeah, hey, we, we don't, yeah. actually, Paul, we don't, we don't rely on you for any content, so don't worry when about it. When it comes to Facebook, no. <laughs> Or otherwise. Hey, or otherwise. Burn! Minecraft, Paul. Stardew. Who set up Minecraft and Stardew, Paul? That's a valid point. I just play it. <laughs> I just play it. But anyway, since we're uh, 40 minutes into what I said would only be like 20. <laughs> well, I tell you what. I need a refill. Yes. I need a refill. And then we we, I mean, we have to do the major, the, the major babies. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> Use different words. Yes, please. You're already saying hi, kids, to random people out your car. And then you're using those words. I don't, okay, I don't well, we, we have to. Well, I, I, we'll discuss I, the major babies. We'll d- discuss the major babies. There you so go, buddy. The, you know, kind of like the Muppet babies, but they're the major babies. <laughs> okay, th- this rounds on you for that one. Oh, yeah. definitely. <laughs> definitely. Feel safe, hey, honey, guys. come here. Come here. Yes, yes, that's the bottle I want. Ooh, <laughs> tiny it's, it's, a, it's a DeLorean, isn't it? Scales, okay, well, you're always in my face. Right? I might have driven a DeLorean here. Yeah. I pull up a chair, friend. So here we are. Summer of Lance 3, first book, part one. Book one of the first part of the Race of Chronicles. <laughs> <laughs> this is a prequel. 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 Yep. We all love prequels here. <laughs> we do. We do. Uh, I I love a prequel just like the next guy. Oof. 
Lo- young Orphan Annie on Tatooine. One of my favorites. Oh my I God. love that. <laughs> so out. when I knew Just that, we out. were going to dive in and find out what, what a young Raceland Caramon might be like. I was pretty excited. I'm actually going to join you on that. I was I was actually kind of looking forward to going back. I, and yeah. Seeing no, I, was I, was I, I, I really didn't think we had to go back that far, though. The yeah, amount of time so that they were the, like five. Yeah, the amount of time yeah. that we spend with them when they're six years old, I'm going to talk about. Right. A lot. So I knew this book was going to deal a lot with the test. Yes. Or that was my assumption. I had no idea where this book was going to go. I didn't know if we would I start just out. I didn't know if we would start out with Baby Raceland uh, and Caramon. I didn't know. And we should talk. Was... I did a little bit um, before we get to the synopsis. I did a little bit of like, well, where does. Well, as soon as I learned that this is Raceland Chronicles Part One. Right. Where does it go? Where's Part Two? That is Brothers in Arms. Right. There's another book. And Raceland also does make another appearance in The War of Souls. That is his last appearance in this trilogy. Right. Oh, okay. I might be wrong. Dragonlance fans, call me out. Oh, well, there's tons of, like, the lost histories and junk and uh, preludes. From from what I could find, that is the gods finally put his soul to rest. Mm Mm-hmm. In the, the War of Souls. What, what, I think the important stuff that happens in his life. Yeah, yeah, he might pop up or... We'll have covered... You got Grandpa Raceland coming through. <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, then you got... Yeah, I guess I, I don't know I don't know anything about it, but there is, like, uh, the daughter of Raceland is out there somewhere. Yeah, well, Margaret, I think, has taken... Uh, old Marge has taken the reins with that one. Okay. And done a whole... Tr- I'm, I'm That's actually... probably good that she took the reins. I'm going to actually be... Very in the beginning, I will put my my stamp as this far as saying I enjoyed this book so much or enough that I'm actually excited. I did not know what Margaret Weiss alone would be like because mm. when yep. you're reading a Margaret Weiss Tracy Hickman book, what is Tracy Hickman writing? What is yeah, Margaret you writing? Really don't know. you don't know whose voice is coming through? So I was like, well, okay. So what is a standalone book by Margaret gonna look and feel and sound like? I was very actually impressed. Uh, I really enjoyed a lot of this writing, so I'm excited to go into some of the a lot of the other stuff that she did alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. I, that's that's how I and felt she, too. She's Reason. still pumping books out to this really? day. Really? Yes, yep. she is. Are they all Dragonlands? No, nope, different world. Okay, no. different world. Dragonlands is for now. We'll say in hibernation. We're yes. not going to say it's dead, yeah. but um, did, but did she? So she started her own world, own characters. Yeah, and I, I can't remember the name of it. Um. But she, I've seen her... Hickman has tried as well. I don't think he's been ex- as successful mm-hmm. as Mark. Okay. Yeah. I mean... But she, she's a lot more, like, active on social media and stuff, too. So maybe yeah. that helps her out. I mean, she definitely retweets us and likes our stuff. Right. Which, thank you. I know, I know you're not listening, but thank you, Margaret. Okay. So I guess my goal, and especially this, maybe the first one in through the second one, is going, okay, so when I'm coming at this, if I'm going to recommend this book or not, who would I recommend this book to? Like, what is the yeah. reading order? Well, I mean, reading order here. What I would be like? Would I be like, hey, should this is a prequel, right? Should you read the original first? Read the prequel first? And I'm going to tell you my thoughts on this are real mixed after having read the entire book. As to, in all honesty, I would read the original trilogy first with all my problems. I read this book. This book actually fixed a lot of stuff that yes. I was really? not happy with. I, there's a lot of parts in here that I really okay. wished I'd have had when I was reading that original trilogy. It makes me actually want to go back and reread the trilogy again. But I think that you have to read this one after the original trilogy yeah, because I of... I agree. I mean, some, of you yep. guys, some of you guys aren't there yet, but when you get to the coda of this book, yep. that explains that you have to read this after the I original agree. trilogy. And there's a lot of stuff in this book book that or actually if, if you just picked it I don't know who would pick this book up necessarily off a shelf and really be super invested in it because there are so much ties to the other material yeah. that you almost have to know the characters before <laughs> any of it even matters correct <laughs> why, do they, why do they keep talking about Sturm who is this guy <laughs> yeah. like I should care about him <laughs> uh, and he has mustaches <laughs> No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. There's a reference to his mustache. When they're, when they're, they're, like they're slowly yeah. growing. I, I think he's well, sure lucky growing. Him. Yeah. He's got the like, he's got the little like little eighth dirt, grade peach fuzz. Dirt yeah. stash. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean I'm twenty nine. But there's four of them. <laughs> there's four of them just bristling off his face. Yeah. <laughs> Look at those mustaches. So uh, anyways, let's get into this. Bob, you said that you found a summary. I found a summary at Plotzer. Okay, so this book is so just straight line. This is almost fairy tale ish, I I think, in almost how straight of a narrative this is. So uh 
I'll be completely honest. My thought was, I'm going to do this as one of our one of the song synopsis. Oh, like last year. Like last year. Summer and I am Lance still two. I am still going to do a song. I just didn't have time. So next episode, there will be the song song of Soul Forge. <laughs> what? <laughs> The, the Soul Forge Sonata. The Soul Forge Sonata. Just song, sort of. song of the Soul Forge. <laughs> I needed to oh, talk potatoes and a shut my mouth. Uh, I do need to talk to you about what are what are we gonna what oh, are we gonna do? Potatoes and a shut my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> go on, go on, care, man. Oh, the synopsis, Bob. I got one. So <laughs> I'm ta- I'm stealing this because I think whoever wrote this for Amazon. This is all you need before we totally flesh this out ad nauseum. We're going to have like six hours on this book. Uh, Dungeons and Dweebs' promise is to uh, talk way too long about something that's not too important. <laughs> yes. That, we, can, we can put our seal on that. The Soul Forge by Margaret Weiss. Copyright 1998, TSR Incorporated. At this time, TSR, a subsidiary of Wizards of the Coast. Bum bum. <laughs> A mage's soul is forged in the crucible of magic. Raceland Majer is six years old when he is introduced to the Archmage, who enrolls him in a school for the study of magic. There the gifted and talented but tormented boy comes to see magic as his salvation. Mages in the magical tower of high sorcery watch him in secret, for they see shadows darkening over Raceland, even as the same shadows lengthen over Ancelon. Finally, Rayson draws near his goal to becoming a wizard, but first he must take the dreaded test in the Tower of High Sorcery. It will change his life forever if he survives. That's all you need. <laughs> it really is. It's short, yeah. sweet, concise. To the point. Yep. It covers everything that this book is about. I, I agree. Um, I would... Uh, again, I'm going to say I'm impressed with this book and how linear it is. Well, I don't know if I'll say impressed. This is an incredibly linear story. It, it is very linear, especially compared to the other books uh, that we have read about them, where they were kind of jumping around a little bit. And really, Paul, I mean, you're, you're kind of right. Mm-hmm. This book does do the same thing that the other books does where you know we're jumping between characters we start with okay and help me with the name here antimodes as n- n- antimodes antimodes <laughs> antimodes yeah antimodes that, that's the way i was saying it antimodes antimodes uh, we start with him we jump to Raceland, and we're like it's just kind of you're not really you're just kind of like in solace and then you just follow whatever is the most interesting character and, and actually it starts out just like Dragons of Autumn Twilight, where you're yes. following somebody into Solace. You're following Fisbin in, and I agree. I think they, they latched onto that with Gandalf, you know, yep. in The Hobbit, yes. and so they're continuing with that kind of, like Star Wars always opens with the mm-hmm. M- Empire or something. Yeah. That's the same thing I feel here is where, okay, we're going to, Margaret is, how does it something feel, get the feel, the oxygen of Dragonlance? Well, you start out with your mage mm-hmm. who is going in to get you into the story. And I guess, are, are, we, are we jumping in? Are we Let's in chapter one? Let's jump in. We're yeah. in book chapter one, one, chapter one. Book one, Raceland Chronicles, part one. <laughs> Soul Forge. So we are um, we are 15 years before the War of the Lands, and we meet the white robed wizard, which we talked about, Antimodes. 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 And his Antimides. donkey Jennifer. Yes. <laughs> you don't I mess with Jennifer. That. You don't mess with Je- old Jenny. If you do something okay, wrong, I, she'll kick you right in the balls. I liked I liked the donkey Jennifer at first, but like, okay, let's give it a rest. <laughs> Stop bringing her up. <laughs> it feels like that's like his. It's kind of his only love. Like he, you get the impression from this guy that he is a little bit of a whiner and a womanizer. Like he likes and I like women. Well, I womanizer, well, even a little younger. I like that. I like <laughs> that this very much from the beginning here. Um, humanizes the wizards. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Humanizes yes. your mages. Yes, they're not yep. like a clerical order. Yep, they're not a clerical order. They're not monks. They're not clerics. You know, it's they just happen to be dudes, who, dudes and ladies that do magic. <laughs> and right, but add... they're still left to the vices of humanity yes. if they choose. Yeah. I like, I do like. But that. it also adds some background because we didn't really have much information about what the archmages, all those things were. All it was was, hey, we know they're really powerful. Here we know they're just humans. Like this guy, you yeah. know, he was a shopkeeper. The other 
the other guy, Par Pal Saladin, I can never remember. <laughs> Par Par Salian. Salian. Parsalian. He's he, super major. You're supposed to know him, Paul. I know him in the book. <laughs> Say him aloud, not so much. Uh, so it's one of those. Parasailing. Parasailing. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever his name is, he's he's not important, is he? You know, I don't need Parsalian. to. <laughs> I know. Um, but well, yeah, but I, he, I think this is a very human image of kind of the roaming mage. In the other books, yeah. we got a, we get little drops of other mages other than Raceland. Mm-hmm. And it's and it, it kind of it fleshes out the orders. Yes. It definitely yes, fleshes yeah. out the orders other than just these people who happen to have different colored robes on, mm-hmm. which right. is what we had found. And it will before. even more in a couple chapters later. Yes. Right? Yeah. But he definitely enters kind of like a Gandalf in there into the into Solace where all this activity is going on and he then comments on these two kids, little snotty kids that run by. One's got like a greasy bowl cut hair or whatever. Oh, and the and other one like one he thinks is a is a boy, but it actually turns out to be a girl. It's Sturm and Kit. Yeah, and it, was, it wasn't. I didn't pick up on Kit right away. It was Sturm. I was. Re- I remember reading through the first chapter of this, and and it's like it's just dropping these little hints, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, that that must be Sturm, and I didn't think it would outright say it, right? Well, but it does. And this was, a, yeah. and this would be a great, which is fine. And this would be a great scene to open the movie. I agree. Yes. It's just the wizard riding in on Jennifer mm-hmm. into Solace. We get the big, pa- we get like the big camera pan of the houses and the trees yes. and everything. And these little kids come running and they're playing war and they like spook the donkey and yes. I believe Margaret has a movie playing in her mind as yes. she's yes. writing this. Because I can see a lot of what she's seeing. I, I really like this. And what a job. What a job to have. What What do you do? I go around and I wander around and I look for things that are magical to report back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they pay me for this. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like he's getting well, a... Well, sort of. It's we'll like he works later for the on. county. We'll pick up later <laughs> yeah. on. I feel like he's getting a stipend. I feel like he gets a stipend. He has to. Yes. Because we'll pick up later on like how difficult it is in this day and age for a wizard to run around the countryside. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he, but he's not dressed like a wizard either. No. He's, he's riding he's his... He's riding, he's riding his donkey. Old oh, Jenny. He, he's riding his donkey in a pimp suit. <laughs> yeah, because it talks about it talks about the, he's wearing very fine. He's got a very fine jacket and pants on, and <laughs> <laughs> but we move in just like kind of the last uh, my the chronicles. A, my brother's a tailor. <laughs> Chapter two, we get to the end of the last home, and I like when my dragon lance starts with the end of the last home. Got to get it's, yourself some spicy it, your potatoes, don't you, Bob? Yeah, old Marge doesn't disappoint here oh, on nope. this description of the inn. It does feel, after all the Dragonlance we've done, like we're slipping into a comfortable pair of shoes. Like, ah, uh, okay, into the last You home. open the door and Odic's there, and it's yep. Odic. Right. We even go a little bit before that, We you're getting it from an outsider's perspective. Right. Where he's like out of breath just trying to get there. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, everybody's like, oh so used God. to walking up these yeah. damn stairs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know when you're when you're first reading through the Dragonlance series, I always forgot that Solace was up in trees. Yeah, this right. this made me remember. I thought it was, it was just in trees. I, yeah. I I actually will actually dovetail off of that and say yes, I do believe that first trilogy didn't do a great job always oh, yeah. of making it making you remember they're in trees. She does a much Margaret alone does a much better job of painting the picture of Solace here. Yes. I think in this because I know I know chapter. they talked about stairs in that in those first couple chapters of Autumn Twilight, but it made me see, like, I, I saw, like, almost like a, an Incan, like, pyramid, like, stones, <laughs> like, large stone stairs that just went, like, impossibly on forever. Yeah. Right. But whereas this really paints the picture for you. This I, I reminded agree. me of the Wookiee home, home world Kashyyyk. in, in uh, Kashyyyk, thank you, in uh, KOTOR. Oh, yeah, there you go. Game, where it was like, you're all up in the trees, yeah. you know. Suspended yes. bridges. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed it. And so, and Timothy's rides into town, the kids are playing in front of him, right. and we, we get the drop, we get the couple drops right away of who these kids are. And it's, it, I liked that because it was like, oh, okay, he's going to get spooked, the donkey's getting spooked, and we're talking about Jenny again, mm-hmm. why are we caring about the donkey getting spooked? Yeah. But again, great scene as the kids come around and spook the donkey a little bit, and then, um, is it Sturm? Puts a stop to yeah. yeah. Puts a stop to it, and I, I, you go play over there. Yeah. I apologize, sir, for our interaction with your donkey. And that was I hope it. your donkey. I hope your donkey will be okay. <laughs> and then it talks about the fact that they're six years old. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, no, no. Yeah. Si- th- this entire beginning of the book, none of these well, six year olds talk they're not like six all years. Six years old. What? Oh, Kit, Kit's Kit, a little Kit's early, like older. Ten. 
Yeah, I don't know if they're like. And then 10 that's going to roll into something else here where uh, Intimidies. 13, I believe, because I, I was just looking oh, at the chat. Yes, Intimidies yes. is a man of the ladies, and yes. he's noticing her. Yeah. You pervert. Thank you. <laughs> it's crazy. It is a different world. Just like the wild, just like the old West was different, just like the Middle Ages was different. And by 13 in the middle, in the 1500s, she would have had two kids already. <laughs> That's because they were probably going to die. <laughs> okay, I'm reading this in 2019, and I just can't. I don't, it, it got a little uncomfortable know. as he's describing her. I'm like, eh, dude, eh, no. Well, I no. think maybe there might be just a problem here with the fact that Kitty Ara has been established as such a, a sexual yes. being that then when she is a younger child, as a, as a writer, you're trying to... Tip that off to your audience, like, oh, here's the super sexy Kitty Aro when she was a kid, and weirdly alluding to her sexuality is not appropriate. Nope. <laughs> no, no, Marge, no. <laughs> so, yeah, so he goes to the end of the last home. Yeah. He Odix there, and again, like you said, it's a comfortable pair of shoes. It's walking into it's yes. it's walking into your favorite bar. It's walking in. Oh, he's been here before. Right, Odic yeah. is the Odic is that you know great host who remembers everybody that comes through the door. It's like, hey, it's been a long time since we've seen you. Sit down. If I remember <laughs> right, you like my dark ale. Give bring him yep. a picture of the dark and, ale. And Flint is there. Flint is just waiting oh, for Tannis. Flint is just, Flint drunk. Yeah, Flint, <laughs> like standard Flint. Flint, Flint. Flint is that midday is that is that midday old guy that comes. In for half he's just hour. Norm yeah. hanging out there. No, he's Norm. <laughs> he's Norm. He's, just Norm. Hanging. he's got all the. He's got all the information. Flint. He's got all the no. rumors. He's heard yeah, everything. But he's he's, he's more. He's more Cliff than he is. Norm. Yeah, he is. He is definitely more. But Cliff. he's just. He's just. If, and I work like I like I said earlier. One of the things I do during the summer is I bartend a lot, and I work in this little tiny dive bar in my little tiny town where everybody knows everybody else. Where name. everybody knows everybody, and you, hold, and you always have yeah. the old guys that come in to walk. You have the old guys and the old couples that come in at four o'clock. Every day, and I swear to God, every day they come in at four o'clock for happy hour because I'd like to be happy for an hour. <laughs> um, come in, order the same thing, and we watch Jeopardy. Right. But it literally, <laughs> like <laughs> listeners, if you ever That's walked into this place, you'd have a uh, friendly, friendly man club running the bar there. But literally, it'd be like one of those movies where you walk in and every bar seat would swivel, swivel <laughs> to turn and look at you and go. Who's that? Record yeah. scratch noise. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but, the, but there's so much travel that goes through Solus being, yes. being the center that they're used to different people and they're, yeah. they're more, they're open to newcomers. They yeah. talk about that a lot and how, how they are open to newcomers. So Antipodes sits down, gets his glass of beer and he's just kind of enjoying himself. And Wait, okay, over now, at the see bar now we do have to definitely talk about how old is Kit? Because yeah, I remember in my notes I wrote down 13. that he, she comes in, leans over revealing ample formed breasts. Underneath her leather vest it's the beginning that is of weird it's yeah. the beginning of it's it, yeah, it, was, it's, it was the beginning of breast because i was just in the chat i, I was just in that chat yeah, i don't like this over. mage so, no so she, i don't either this yeah. mage is not I, hanging out by my daughter so no, she no. anyways she's 13 she he's enjoying his beverage she comes in and is like hey i want to talk to you yes and he's like I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> right. And yeah. it just kind of ignores her. because, And it, it makes a drop in here, too, about how Antipodes doesn't really enjoy children. No, not at all. No. And I, he's like, I don't, you're, and he still, he sees her as a child, a burgeoning child, but a child. <laughs> you have still, potential and, in the future. And, and Odic is like, Odic is like, stop bothering my customers. And Kit yeah. even, at this point, even stares Odic down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Odic is like, um, uh, oh. is she bothering you? Fine, what do you want? You're a magic user, aren't you? I saw your yeah. pouch. Yeah. Kit, Kit is that kid that just knows how to manipulate adults. But she too. is also incredibly worldwide. Yes. Right? Because she yes. comes from a home where it's basically dad's never there, mom is crazy. She's, so she's, she's that running dad, the show. Stepdad's. But remember, yeah, stepdad's never there. Yeah, stepdad's never there. Yeah. She's she's the one that is controlling everything. She's, she's running the, one, the show. She's mm -hmm. the one that looked out for Raceland when he was little. Yeah, she's right. got all these plans for yeah. like what her brothers are going to do. Eventually, because, she's going to leave, so yeah. she's got to take care of her brothers. Right. She, and, and, and it is that, that blossoming adulthood. Mm -hmm. And that is why she ends up bringing in her brothers, well, Caravan yeah, and, and Raceland. You should, yeah. you should see my brother. Well, how old? He does magic. Yeah, but Antipodes is like, what do you mean he does magic? Well, he does, he, he takes coins Tricks. out of people's ears and like pulls rabbits out of hats and scarfs out of his sleeve and, oh, tricks. Yeah, those mm. are tricks, not yeah. not magic, right? And she actually just tells him, you need to see my brother. Yeah. Yes. 
Uh, so and and Timides assesses the boys. Uh, the opening descriptions of Raisin and Caraman are very telling. I think uh, they're both dirty, uncombed. All Shoeless. they're neglected. They're like the typical street kids, urchin. street they're street urchin, urchin kids. kids. They're the, yeah, they're it's like, a hard knock life. Yeah, for, for us, us, it's a hard knock life, life for us. I'll do I was it. going more for the street rat song from Aladdin, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> So if we would have known that one, we would have started he's singing. He's sick. I, I, don't, I don't remember. But it. see, and again, this this whole, rat. <laughs> this this whole portion is they're six. The yes. twins are six, yes. and that really the way they talk in the beginning of here, and the way that this you know gets started up, and the way that you know Antimides interviews him, and yeah. his responses to being interviewed, he's not six. Raisin like, isn't. Caramon, he might be. Make him. Like, Caramon does sound like he's six. In my mind, it's just hello, sir. Are you a wizard? Kit says you're a wizard. You know, I could could you do some tricks? My twin can do tricks. Like that six year old. I think Caramon's up, but Raisin, you almost get the feeling like he's Damien from the Omen. Yes. yes, yes, it's he does tricks. Here, show him that trick with the coin. No. Shut up, Caramon. Shut up, Caramon. Yeah, you're it's, being foolish. Yeah. I I have a six year old at home. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> She's definitely not Caramon, or I mean, uh, Raisin. No, not no, Raisin. Not Raisin. So. Um, Anyways, they go through this interview, and oh, hey, I guess he does have some. I tell you what, there's a. Funnily enough, five miles down the road, there's a magic school you can go to. Yeah, you know, I'll, 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 I'll make. We, we, we have a scholarship for kids yeah. like. You. I, I thought initially that it was the magic school is kind of like the high Clara or the high Clara's tower, the magic or tower of high sorcery, and at Wayworth where it moved. Right, yeah. yeah. That's what I thought, but no, there actually is just a magic school. Just yeah. a magic school, literally just five miles down the road. Yeah. But, <laughs> but... Theo's, the, just a sign out in the front that says Theo's School of <laughs> Magic. I did want to... But you do have to walk there, so five miles is kind of a big deal. I well, did want to bring up... The, but they're six-year-olds. Yeah. And now but, they're going to walk five miles down the road to go to school. They Uphill to. both ways. <laughs> they, yeah. they didn't have to. He offered to board them as well. Yeah. It was one With of those where it was an option. It was With the the twins? Just Caramon. I know. Twins. Or just the Raceland. Just Raceland, not Caramon. Just Raceland, not Caramon. Caramon, he could have cared less. Basil. 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 I did want to bring twins. Up, I did want to <laughs> bring up one thing that is mentioned here that I think is kind of telling. Antim- Antimides notes that the look on Raceland's face is not one of love for his brother's loyalty, but the pleasure that a man mm. takes in exhibiting the talents of a well-loved dog. Yes. Which I do like. He's but six. It, I know! Yeah. Well, okay, I do I do like that for Raceland's character, but also he is six, and also it does kind of, he wavers back and forth throughout this book. Ooh, boy, yes. Where where he does actually care for Caramon. Uh, there, is, there is portions of this, this book you, you, you where got, he you, becomes extremely, like, Benevolent and loving and caring at points. Yeah, yeah. he's he's. And you you guys are that. correct. At this point in the book, that is not the right place for that. I don't think so. No, I would agree. Yeah, it's it's not the right point. Or or, yeah, or, or you know, like play it down more. Or not at six. I'm with being eight to ten. It might work. Like yes. at this point, you're getting irritated with your brother. He treats him like a a dog. Unless we're going with Raceland is more intelligent than your, much more intelligent than your that, I feel like that's on, that when, might be I think we're, I think we're supposed to think of him yes. as Damien because, from the Omen. Yes. Like because he is, he's, he's not, smart. Oh, he's that yeah. kid that you go, eh, I, sh- I say a joke and, he's oh, not a normal a six year. Yeah. Oh, no, crap. no, and we'll kind, kind of what we get later on in this book is that they, they are two halves of like, what I'm just going to call Captain America, like the perfect human being. Right. Yeah. Like the the brain was separated from the body, and they got one guy who is the best a human body could be, and yeah. one brain that is the best a human brain could be. Yeah. Yes. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, definitely. So it could that be that could be I guess what she's going could for. Be, so so he might just be a gen- just like a Ar- genius, just control. like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito and twins. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've God. never met a six year old. What a genius. movie! So right. Classic. That that could be it. Is I've never met a six year old genius before. It's, but already okay. So we met six year old Raisin. We've met six year old Anakin. Fight in a fight. Who would win? Oh, well, Raceland's sickly, so probably Anakin. I'm yeah. still going with Raceland. Raceland would kick Anakin's butt. You think? I hate little Anakin. I, okay, maybe Raceland. <laughs> no, Raceland would play dirty. Yes. That is the key thing, is he would he would definitely... Raceland would be like Macaulay Culkin from The Good Son, and yeah. get like... It would be... Them to jump no, off because a cliff. what would yeah. happen... <laughs> 
what would happen is race is rate like Anakin would like maybe hit him once. And all of a sudden, Caramon would come across like Bam Bam from the Flintstones, <laughs> or the Hulk. And all of a sudden, it'd be, it would be the Hulk Loki scene from the first Avengers. <laughs> I feel like Caramon Race- would just walk up and go Bam, 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 Bam. Raceland would be like, "Let's go pod racing, my brother," and like get him to get into the pod, and then he blow like, it up. He yeah, he just he, do something to Anakin's he's pod wily. and you and kill them both. You see it later on the book when uh, the kids are picking on him, and the he puts that. The pine the nettle leaf, the yeah. nettle leaf in his in his bag, and gets the kid to hurt himself. He's like, eh, "That's what he'll do." Right. You know? but I do I, like this drop that that um, Marge, yeah, <laughs> that, Marge. Marge, that that Margaret that Margaret does here. Um, she kind of drives it really, really well home in this first in this in this first beginning part here. No loving mother doted over these boys. No loving hands combed the tangled hair. No loving uh-huh. tongue scolded them to wash behind their ears. They did uh-huh. not have the whipped and hangdog air of beaten children, but they were certainly neglected. Yeah, yeah. They're the I kid, do. They're the kid that comes to school in the same shirt every single day for yeah. The there's entire there, there's no bruises or anything, but he's the these, these are the six year olds that are getting up making themselves breakfast. Yeah, <laughs> stuff. Yeah. And I want to say here, I love a lot of Margaret's writing in this book. Her style. For sure. I yes. really like her style of writing. It's very clear. It's very, it can be flowery at times, but in a very enjoyable way. I really enjoy, Margaret now lives in Wisconsin. I don't know where she originally came from. Was she originally from Wisconsin? Anybody know? Uh, I have no uh, idea. Midwest for sure. She definitely has this Midwestern feel of somebody who knows how real people and real communities interact. Yeah. Because when I read about Solace and I read about how the kids grew up it feels very real to me it yeah. doesn't it doesn't feel like some some authors kind of have a, a real overblown view of their characters and how they grew up this feels legit this and is- i even feel like this that's how pulled back we are they're just going to a magic school 5 miles down the road and throughout this entire book nothing crazy in terms of the universe is going to happen. This is a very no. small narrative. Yeah, there's no like world men world disasters anything no. like that. You get hints of what might come might, with yeah. with Kitty Ara saying like, "Hey, come up north, there's stuff going on." You yeah. know, but it's it's one of those where there is no there's no cataclysm, there's no, no war of the lands. No. This is just a very small contained book and I yeah. actually appreciate it for that. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to talk about that probably in uh, a second. All right. Um so chapter 4. Yep. Uh, a month later, the Chambers of Parsalian, this chapter serves a twofold purpose. We get a quick look at Kryn and what many of the nations are doing. We get a feeling of the looming darkness. The world of Kryn is fractured with many cultures isolating themselves. It's like nationalism before World War I. I really like this because uh, I felt we were dumped into the Chronicles uh, and we just kind of, through reading it, got the idea that nobody talked to each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas here, Margaret is like kind of telling us, hey, this is, we've got a lot of runaway nationalism here and all of these cultures are not talking to each other and are being driven away. I really liked it. I, I really liked this. Uh, World building stuff. I, a lot of it I, felt repeated. It's a little bit, but I would say with more clarity. I yes. think there's more clarity in this time going through it. Well, and it wasn't it wasn't too far into the clarity. It wasn't like another it didn't, book. It didn't bog it's, it down. No, I there was think. no bog down. It was just nope. here's kind of a brief thing of what's going on in the world around them because we know the world. We know there are different races. We know those things. Race and Caramon, they don't know the world as much, but we do as the readers, so it's kind of like a, here. This well, is a fill-in, and we no. have and we have a few drops that go through here too. Oh, your name, your last name's Majer. Did you know that that was a name of one of the old gods? Yeah, and and you, that's that. I mean, that's that's a fan. That's an Easter egg, right? Yeah, there. definitely it's fan service. Yeah, because you're going. Uh, yeah, because it was actually uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I agree. Which is continuously brings me to the conundrum of when could somebody read this before reading Chronicles? And I don't think I, so. I, think, I think, so. think you have to read Chronicles first, yeah, and then read this. I think up to this point, it's oh, it'd be okay. This opening few chapters is good, but then too much happens that really wouldn't have any meaning for anybody. I would be interested to see if somebody has read this book first, yeah, and, and what then they think. went back in. So if mm-hmm. one of our listeners, if that's what you did, where you came back, was Soul read, Forge your entry? Point. Yeah, was Soul Forge yeah. your entry point? And let or, us know. Or did you have a weird entry point? Yeah, because I know there's yeah. because we, we came in book one or 
volume one, book one. Yeah, did somebody yeah. else run in somewhere else? Yeah. yeah. And then go, I was wait, reading wait. Fifth Age before I read anything else. I don't know. I you started ever... with War of the Souls. By the way, not... if you started with Fifth Age, let us know. Because, <laughs> first of all, what the hell did you... <laughs> <laughs> the amount of people I know that will just like go and grab a book and start reading without looking at things is ridiculous. I, I can't... I don't know. I can't do that. I'm going to just throw this out there for Brendan, we, though. At this point, what I am missing dearly. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, you're not. Who is everybody really missing at this point? Just adults in general. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, the golden general. Hey, I'm missing tennis. I forget, first... forget the golden general. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, man. Okay. Um, end of chapter three is your omen line. Who's that woman that put on a diaper and drove all the way from Texas to Florida to kill that other woman? Excuse oh, that was, me? That was a, an astronaut, a former an, a astronaut. A former astronaut. That, that is going to be Brendan. Brendan is going to put on a diaper, drive all the way up here, and kill down you. Down here. Down here. <laughs> down here. Kill you. And <laughs> I don't care. I'm sorry, Brendan. I'm sorry. I want to move on with the book we're actually in. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, which doesn't have any Lorana. Oh. <laughs> um, well, actually, it, it does make reference to her later on. It but, does. Um, and we love you, Brendan. The, and we, we do. We do, Brendan. And we, we, we do love Brendan. Lorana. Uh, uh, when he asked the question... I think we were 50-50, weren't we? Antimides asks the question, uh, I have a question for you. Why do you want to be a mage? Raceland's blue eyes flared. I like the feeling of the magic inside me, and... And someday... Fat Indian keepers will bow to me. It's a creepy line to come from a six-year-old. It's yep. all for you, Raceland. <laughs> it's all for yep. you. No, I agree. This these early chapters, some of the stuff Raceland says is not in character for a normal six-year-old. Normal. So you keyword there is normal. I think a lot of people who are big fans probably will massage this, mm -hmm. finesse this, whatever, as that he is not normal. He is. I no. would have more of. More like to watch him like slowly turn. You know, I mean, obviously he would have to be very smart and just slowly watch that corrupt him. I, and yeah, I, well, yes, I, and, and but I, this is a this is a line from a psychopath. Yes, like, I want everyone to worship. But that's how he cycles in this book. He cycles from extremes of being like, "Holy cow, this guy is like Satan," to being very benevolent. Yeah, four so, years. Yeah. Four years would have made the difference to me. Started off, he's been ten. He's yes. ten. He's been picked on. He's been picked on. He's had to learn how to be scrawny and weak and weak with the other boys for ten years for all yep. ten years of his life. Uh, had to be dependent on his brother. Make him ten, and I would have felt a whole lot more. It's about, ironic. I say the same thing about himself. Anakin. If we could have just given that kid <laughs> four years, it <laughs> would <laughs> so much better. Uh, Two so years. We've 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 met Sturm a little bit. We've met Caramon. Um, Flint. Can't forget about Flint. We go. We Flint. finally in chapter five. We open yes. with a daily life of the Majer house. Uh, Mom is bad <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yep. She's in rocking chairs, uh, talking. She's knitting and talking about her first it's, husband, Gregor. Uh, it's because she hasn't met Balthazar or whatever. That yeah. Is. She's Gregor so Matar. He's like she. What he was a knight of Salamnia, don't you know? Like, how hard would it be to be her current husband uh, when all she does is want to talk about the former? Thoughts from my yep. head. He's gone all the time. Well, that's true. He, I will Making say, money she's for the family. Yeah. I like Gillian. Poor guy is a real put upon guy. Yes. I mean, he's making money for the family. His wife's nuts. He's trying to make ends meet. You know, he's, he does I a good actually, job for where he's at. I, I, I'm actually gonna go like the schizophrenic route here. Oh, with yes. the mom. With the yeah. mom. I'm yeah. going dementia. Because de because but. because she never had her magic trained. Yeah. yeah, she's she's like gone into this like dementia because she could see the future. Yeah, she's a seer. Yeah, she's gone into this uh, dementia schizophrenia you know, like yeah. aspect because she never learned how to control what's I inside her. I like and that I like theory. the way she. I like the way that it's written here, yeah, and that's I one do. of the things that that's one of the things that Margaret talks about in here too is this idea of if you have the magic, you have to learn how to control the right. magic. Or I, and I think she's really pushing here that, or this is what happened. Yeah. The magic eats your brain. Right, yeah, you're going to rock in this yeah. chair. Nuts. Yeah. Um, Kit gets the boys packed for school, and off they go. Um, I well, love I love this whole thing about how they eat bread on the way that's moldy, and Caramon just wolfs the thing down. I was like, I love this moldy bread. And meanwhile, Raceland is like picking the mold off and being like, I wonder what kind of spell I can make out of this. Right? Like the, no, the division like, between this the might two. be useful later. Yeah, but I like this because a lot. Mar Margaret is going to do 
throughout this entire book, pulling out little mundane things mm-hmm. that separate the two characters, show who they are. Yeah. And I, I really enjoyed that, these little, these little kind of character moments. Okay, so we're moving down the road. We're on the road to school. <laughs> yep. And on the road to school, we meet Farmer Dan or whatever his name is. Yeah. Uh, like it's like uh, pe- hedges, like hedges. I don't know. He's some farmer, dude. Yeah, we, we meet the farmer, and the farmer offers to give him a ride, and they can go back and forth, and he offers Carmen a job. Who's offering a six-year-old a job? Yeah, well, can, his kids are too old, and he's a buff little six-year-old. This is, <laughs> yeah. can, can I, I understand this? Young, sorry. Can I also read? This is an example of when Raceland doesn't sound six. Race. I already have a sword, Caravan, Raceland said. Not a sword like yours. Not one made of metal. This sword is inside of me. It's not a very good weapon right now. I'm going to stop you. It needs to be hammered into shape. That's why I'm going to I'm going to stop sword. you. You are incorrect. What? Because he is just saying what Intimides had said to him. He's oh. just a child repeating what an adult told him. I already oh. have a sword, Caramon. Not yeah. a sword like yours. Not one made of metal. It's it's inside of me. I mean, he might be able to. It's grab all in how it. you read it. Yeah, it is. It is on a, in all all in how you read it. But also, I like your point there of how he's just, he's just repeating. He yeah. is, and kids yeah. do that all the time. They repeat what adults say. I like that. Yeah. No, yeah. there's only a few it's times where I think that it didn't sound like a six year old. But in all honesty, it didn't it didn't bother me because I immediately made him Damien. Yes. From the omen. Yes. And it all just seemed right. Yes, because we know where this goes. I know. Yeah, exactly. And we know where we we know where this goes and we know what happens, but I'm just I'm Mm -hmm. I'm just picturing, you know, Caramon walking down (laughs) these two walking down the road. And wouldn't they stand out to everybody? And just he's he hasn't gotten to school yet, so he hasn't gotten his stuff. But like it Afterwards, when he gets to school and we start dealing with things, I'm just picturing him like like little six year old little little like Yoda robe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like you didn't do that when you were six. No, no, I know. Um, <laughs> so we get. But to you school. also didn't ride in a cart five miles to school. You know, like yeah. yes. he's it's, like Boss Baby. Bracelet's <laughs> <laughs> yes. just got this giant. Head. Are you telling like, me you but, watched? Boss Baby? I have kids. Oh, okay. I've Fair watched I was Boss say, Baby. I've, I've watched it as well because I, I, I have kids. And so I, I actually find it... I haven't either. I find it hilarious. <laughs> I've watched... I've, I've watched the... Uh, Take a the, nap. I Take. love Boss Baby! I've watched the YouTube Everything Wrong with Boss Baby. <laughs> oh. Ooh. No, I have Was not watched 20 that. 20 minutes long? About God. that, yeah. <laughs> it's, it might be longer wow. than the movie. <laughs> Um, so Raceland agrees to work for a farmer. I don't know what he's no, doing. Caramon. No, Caramon. Or Car- sorry, Caramon. Lifting uh, bales of hay. In in exchange for transport for Caramon, right? Which, how benevolent is a Caramon six-year-old is working, Caramon? Caramon is working f- for ex- in exchange for transport for Raceland. Yes. yes. That's what I said. Nope. I didn't That's say that. not what you said. No. <laughs> Caramon agrees to work for the farmer to transport Raceland. Yes. Yes. Um, but again, uh, quite a six-year-old. To be like, I'll pay for brother's school here by doing this. But there, there, there's I, a little bit of talking beforehand about how, like, they talk about uh, learning math. And Caramon's like, I don't, I, don't, I don't care about any of that. I just want to be stab people with a sword. And I'm just going to do whatever I can until I can get there when Kitty Ara comes, ba- comes back for them. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's, it, it's right. working for it me. It also, though, does point Why out... Why am I defending Dragonlance? Yeah, because <laughs> it, it does point out his... Caramon's <laughs> love for Raceland. He's willing to do anything. It also, once mm-hmm. again, shows that Raceland is willing to take advantage of that. Uh, yes. That he is willing to sit there and go, yeah, brother, you work. I'm just going to go to school. There you go. Yes. I yeah. think a lot of the problems that I had at the end of even, um, you know, the both the Chronicles trilogy and the Legends trilogy um, is being erased by this book because I'm seeing this as a pattern. Like, I'm now, yes. throughout this book, it is a constant yo-yoing with Raceland where he will kind of seem to actually care and love mm-hmm. his brother. And then mercilessly use him. It's an abusive relationship. It's an incredibly it, abusive relationship. It's a 100% and, But and I love the way Margaret that's, that's, handles yes. it in a lot of this. Uh, that's fine. I would have rather have been like a very slow build and then like a culminating as I get what you're no. saying. Instead of that, it was happening all the time. Like yeah. from the time Instead they were children, the, the it's been constant. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. But I think that actually makes it stronger for me because it means that Caramon has become dead to it. That This is why my big problem oh. in Legends is why Caramon is such a baby that he keeps taking it from Raceland. Well, he's been doing and it's it like six. Some, from the time he's been six yeah. years he's old. He's been doing he's it been from doing the it. womb. From yeah. the womb. <laughs> 
<laughs> Raceland kicked him out. I think maybe in the womb, Caramon might have owned that one. You get out and stretch it out so it doesn't hurt me as much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. All right, my brother. Oh, do we? Well, he was dead when he came out of the womb, and like yeah. Kit brought him back to life. Mm-hmm. Speaking oh, of Kit, God. Kit is Kit's, uh, Kit's, Kit's hanging out in she bars, gone. grabs a bunch of maps, and she's gone. She go. Yep. She's gone. Yep. Yeah, she's off to find her father. Well, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to see some cells or what assassins. That whole conversation was amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, Kit's the one that everybody in Solace was like, "Yeah, now she's gonna be pregnant by the time she's 14. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then she comes riding back into town with an army, literally. <laughs> literally. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, um, go get him, Kit. I I agree. Um, I'm on Team Kit now. <laughs> All right. All right. Chapter six, Master Theobald's School for Mages. Oh all of this to me is Ebenezer Scrooge. I've met, yes. I've, I've very met this teacher like. before. I swear to you. <laughs> it's me. No, <laughs> it's not. It's none of you guys. <laughs> you care. I had this teacher. No, I, yeah, it's I'm and, and the whole time like going up races learning stuff and he's like piped yeah. up and he's then of, then as he's getting older, he's like, I'm actually way smarter than this guy. I was gonna say got, but he does have he does have some actual stuff he has to teach me, so I have to pay attention yeah, to Yeah, I love right. the fact that Rayson very early, yeah, knows yes. that he is smarter than Theobald, but still there's things he needs to teach him, and so he kind of uses that. Uh, I want a well. willow branch for my classroom. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You're not allowed to do that in the state. You gotta the, go to like Texas. the kids fault the Texas, Texas man. You're sleeping in my class! <laughs> Quap! Just, just move to Texas. You're fine, bud. <laughs> well, and Theobald is just like, you know, he is that. In every school movie, yes, there's always the there's always the master Theobald. Yes, yes. there's always that one teacher who kind of thinks they're smart, but they're kind of half-assing their job. And, yep. but they don't have any other marketable skills, so that's why they're that's here. why they're I, doing that. I agree. Yeah. I, I agree. do love how at the conclave they they talked about why they threw him in the school. Because he could do nothing else. Yeah. He, he yeah. cared about nothing. They were just kind of like, uh, well, and, well, and, and, he, and no one else wanted the job. No one wants well, the job. Well, because he's in the, I mean, he's at Solace. He's in a little yeah. school five miles out of yeah. Solace. I mean, how many yeah, great mages are coming out of the tree village? I think, oh, isn't is that the only a little school bit for you guys right no, now? Or? No, no, there's all kinds of schools. <laughs> no, because no. it sounded like nobody, yeah. is it the only school or are no, there more? No, there's, 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 there's schools all around. There's definitely a girl's school. It's District 3228. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> whatever, whatever it is. Uh, uh, I picked up on something that I thought was going to be something, and it's, I don't think it is. So help me with this one. Raceland, the teacher strikes him with a stick, and Raceland, like, fakes sickness yeah. Oh, yeah. during it. And I was like, he liked what he got off of faking sick. So I'm like, okay, so through the rest of. Are we supposed to take from that that at times Raceland fakes that he because this conversation has come yeah, up yeah. Before. He, he overplays and this, and this went he overplays his sickness when it's to his advantage. This went through my mind when I was reading it. Yeah, yeah. he overplays his sick. He's he's done that for his whole life. Is he overplays his frailty when it's to his advantage? Yeah. Yes, and, right. the, and this and is kind of like because where it's it, power. Yeah, and yeah. the power because now everybody's paying attention to him, mm-hmm. and he has the power to determine. What is going to happen next? Yeah, he just likes to manipulate. So when right. he saw that he could do that, it was just like, a, ooh, there's a little, there's a little button. I and you know, push. and he and he fakes this thing, and he gets to go to the private quarters of yes. the school teacher. And I know it's not in the book, but in my mind, I saw him laying back on a leather couch, and like he had a, for some reason, like he stole a grape and like tossed it into his mouth, and just kind of like <laughs> sitting there, like you know, we have kids in like every class that are like this. Oh, you're feeling sick again today, huh? Uh, yeah. You yeah. Want to- well, I still, <laughs> but I still get to listen to the lecture. But you idiots are in there on those stools. I'm lying on the leather couch in yeah. the air conditioned room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? Exactly. <laughs> but um. Chapter 7. And Timides visits the school to see how Raceland is doing. They are learning penmanship, writing things like Chirac. Super important. Very important. Okay, so Dungeons and Dragons people, I know that the original books honed very closely to actual Dungeons and Dragons and how you played it. Mm-hmm. There's a lot made in this book of writing down spells, getting them carefully done. Like, throughout this book, Raceland, except until the last couple chapters, makes actually very little headway. It makes it yeah. look like being a mage is an arduous practice. Yep. Like, they, oh God. they are taking forever to study these spells. They're finally trying to write them correctly in, in their books. Like, is it 
Is that does that translate yes. from Dungeons yes. and Dragons? How difficult? Yes, it is? That, that's why elves are usually wizards because they live long enough to get really good at it. Yeah. Ah, okay. And that's okay. one of the things that Luke in the games that we've in the games that we've played, and I've mm-hmm. watched you, and I've watched and other other D and D games that I've played. Every time, I, anytime you watch the mage. The mage has the most backstory. They have all the books with them. Yep. <laughs> they have to figure out what spell they're doing before they go to bed. You have, if you're playing a game with a group of three mages, it takes freaking. It ever. takes forever <laughs> <laughs> to just fast forward to the like because a lot of times you do well. Okay, everybody goes to bed. Can we fast forward to the next day? Yeah, it takes forever to go through that conversation when you have a couple ma- when you have two or th- mm. two or three mages sitting at the table because all right, well I'm gonna do the uh, spell of Azeroth tonight before I go to bed. Uh, yeah, I'm going thankfully, to, I'm gonna rub my rock of Reiner and uh, <laughs> let's see. This. I, I will say, thankfully, Luke, you usually just go. I'll I'll just do my spells while we're gone. Like while yes, we're talking. Yes, it, and, it and we do we do we have uh <laughs> the, the group we play with we have a very good relationship with our DM where I the the I'll let everybody else start role playing the next day while I'm ro- writing down my spells and he'll just take me on my word that I have already agreed to these spells. Yeah. Because it's, you know, I already have, like, a loose idea, like, okay, well, I know... It's like you have to spend an hour in the morning, either, if you're a cleric, you have to pray yep. in the, an hour in the morning, pray, wizards write, warlocks, yes. they don't have to do anything. Sorcerers right. have to, I don't know... Think if, about it or something, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, think about it, it's a mm-hmm. weird... But it's, yeah... Fighter, I, 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 fighter, yeah fighters fighter. go and get some, so, some beer and sausage and eggs. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you, you, you have to think about what, gonna what's going to happen the next day. Are we just going to be talking to people? Are we going into a dungeon? Do I need yeah. to be, like, battle ready? It's... And it never works. Every time, every time, it's like, uh, Luke, you got something for that? No. No, not this Crap. particular one. But Antimodes takes Raisin into the side room, questions him, and talks well, to him. It, well, should we go back to like how he called him out in class? And oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah sure. he. So Antimodes comes in and he really he's checking on his investment, Raisin. Oh yeah, because yeah. he's paying um, for the class. Yes, we never mentioned that. Like he is paying for. Yeah, everything. there is no scholarship from the tower. No. This right. is just he. He is. He refers to him as my ward. Yes. Right. Yeah. So he comes through the class, he's looking around at all these kids splattered in ink, and Raceland's there, and he he's doing very well. Yes. And Intimidies accidentally says, wow, good job, and then goes, oh no, oh, sh- I know all the other boys are going to like beat you up now. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then he tries to play it off, and it's super funny the way he like, because I, I can just I can just feel it, because you know, I've, I've done... Super realistic. Yeah, I've done uh, yep. like a similar thing working at a school, you yep. know, where you're like, yep. oh, I shouldn't have called you out, I'm just gonna um, <laughs> do my own thing, and all of a sudden, oh, I'm back at the front of the room. Well, uh. and, and the, this scene is gr- w- very well described here, yes. and you can just, you can see the classroom where it's just the one kid's got ink all up his arm, the one kid's got like ink, a handprint on his face, <laughs> Right. there's a kid in the corner drinking, his I, ink. I taught <laughs> second grade. This happens. The like, one kid doesn't. Happens. The one kid the just want to like, be a farmer. What does yeah, the one kid yeah. all, plant butcher. potatoes? Butcher. Or, a butcher. butcher. That's what. Uh, Gord, I, Gordo. 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 I want to go home and be a butcher. <laughs> That's all I want to do. <laughs> but I mean, again, this is a small school next to Solace. Like this is the cream of the crop here. These are your only magic users. Rayson's way ahead of the class. Mm-hmm. Um, I think. Club, right? As we go down, we'll find out what's really happening here. There's manipulation going on mm-hmm. with Raceland from oh, higher always. up. Um, but yeah. Um, but I, I like this. But he so pulls he, him in a side room. Yep, he's taking each individual kid to talk to him. And he's finding out about Gordo wanting to be a butcher. And he brings Raceland in. And what happens with Raceland? I don't remember. Oh, <laughs> right. oh sorry. Uh, when I asked, he th- well, he talks about Kitty Ara, right? And yep. about how she's hanging out with mercenaries. He's like, your sister's a real slut. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, re- I saw her breasts under a leather vest, yeah. and now I I knew her- when I saw those breasts budding that she was going to be nothing but a two-bit slut. <laughs> I've seen her hanging out with mercenaries. Kit can handle her own. <laughs> I agree. Yes, she can. Uh, uh, yes, she, she can, can handle mine anytime. <laughs> Right this, now. Uh, <laughs> but I'm gonna give her a few more years. This episode's going somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it's, going, it's going south. And I'm not going adult. To. Adult kit. <laughs> adult kit. Eighteen hey. plus kit. Can handle. <laughs> but there's a telling thing that happens because he says, "Hey, your brother Caramon uh, might have magical ability too. We want to watch him." Oh. And and instantly, Raceland just like stares daggers at him. Mm. He hates right. That. 
he hates that. And this will come up again and again through the book. This is the only thing that sets Raceland apart yep, from yep. Caramon. Like, Caramon is the good-looking, friendly to all, everybody loves him, Caramon. And here is Raceland, who is sickly. Everybody kind of calls him sly. We could go off the fact that, hey, maybe he is way smarter than everybody else. Talks like a freaking 25-year-old. And everybody's like, don't let your he- kids hang out with the Raceland kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's like really weird. Six years old, he's a sly fox, right? And so magic, being this manipulative magic user, is all he's got. It's and the so, only thing he's got, and it's the only thing that he thinks he has going for him. This is a he's, super important drop because I think this is going to end up playing into why Raceland so quickly burns Caramon in the end, in the test. Okay. Because, because you know, because you guys, it's not a, it's not a spoiler, that. right? Because no. you know that that's what happens. Yeah. Like, I mean, but it's, it's like an instant switch that he's like, I'm going to, like, all don't of a sudden. Tell, don't tell them why. Okay. They okay. need to know. We know That's we true. know from the previous books. I've that, read the book. That part that part yeah. Luke has it. Oh. We know that from previous right. books, part of the test, whatever happened, yeah. Raceland kills Caramon. Yes. Um, well, quote unquote yes. Caramon. Yes. yes. Yeah. We yeah. know we know that from previous books, so that's not a spoiler. That's However, not a spoiler. I, how it happens, we need to leave yeah, that. For we'll the leave next that for the next podcast. <laughs> okay, but I think this is an important drop, right? Here I, yes, for that. Yeah. So we're this moving. Is, this is mine. You have everything else. Yeah, this yeah. is mine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, get I get it. Get that. I get that. It's super oh, realistic. I like this. And what I love about what Margaret's doing, and she will through the rest of these chapters, as she's building up. Raceland. Raceland is not necessarily a character that you feel for. a lot of what happens to Raceland he responds to in the incorrect way. Yes. Like he, yeah. he responds to it incorrectly. So you're not like, oh Raceland, I totally understand why you are the way you are. I just want to hug you. You're kind of like, that was a boneheaded decision, Raceland. <laughs> or you're re- being a real baby right there, Raceland. He, like she's not justifying what Raceland's doing. She's explaining what Raceland's and doing. And see, I don't and see, I don't read a lot of it that way. Oh, really? I just read a lot of it as like this is this is him. Yeah, he is super smart. He has you know make he he makes some of those selfish decisions because yeah. the poor kid hasn't had anything. I agree. And true. it's not like and it's not the I want to hug you and take you away. It's like right. okay, how can we turn those feelings into like good stuff? Yeah, yeah. right, right. Well, this is, <laughs> you know, and it is that one aspect. Um, uh, actually, you have brothers. Bob has brothers. Yeah, you, I don't. You don't. You know, I have a I, you know I have a brother. Being there is that brother thing too when you're yeah. growing up, where you're like, okay, that's your thing. What you know, this is my thing. And if you like, either way, if you like, step into the other zone, sometimes yes. there can be a really big conflict yeah. about yeah you know, about oh my no no that this is my thing. Exactly. Whereas you meet somebody on the outside, they're your friend. Oh, you're in the same into the same stuff as me. Cool. Your that's brother very, is. That's very. Ticked. That's very interesting <laughs> you know? to hear. Especially, I, really like yeah. Yeah. I don't especially, know that. Yeah. Especially if they turn out to be better, better. at yes. whatever you wow. think your thing is. Yep. No. Yep. This is. I, I understand. I wonder if that. Margaret does Margaret I wonder if have sister, I wonder sisters have that. I don't too. know. Does Margaret have brothers? Mm-hmm. Because this is very realistic. Again, I think she does a really fine job with laying down the groundwork mm-hmm. of this relationship. And just for just just for clarity here, uh, Luke uh, here. I'm the only one at the table who doesn't have brothers. I have three younger sisters. He is like the greatest brother to all these sisters. They all just love him and adore him. I, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the oldest <laughs> so. brother, and like I've always been like the like moderator and like <laughs> the neutral party and everything in the house. Well, much like me. you are on the podcast. Ju- I don't judge Whoa. you here. I, I feel sorry yes. for you for that part. <laughs> so are you kind of like the benevolent brother to all of us? Crazy ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't say it like that, okay. first of all. <laughs> I was just saying growing up, yes. that's what I was. So that's, uh, that's why fits into that role. we get to the end so of chapter well seven. <laughs> all right, so into book two, chapter one. Uh, finally, we're at 13. So maybe we can, they're 13 now. Realistic. Maybe the way they talk, more realistic. Caramon actually working on a farm. Kitty Ara should be 18, 18, so any allusions to her breasts, I guess, are okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> okay. So now 13, Caramon comes to take Raceland home for the weekend. Lots of nice conversation, I think, between the brothers here. Caramon is strapping a likable lad. Raceland's not happy about an old widow coming to help their mother. Ah, yes. the widow, widow Judith. 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 Yeah. This is where we meet Judith. Raceland's wise. He's like, hey, nobody does it. something for nothing. Because mm-hmm. Caramon's like, oh, yeah, she's staying over. She, like, cooks us meals and everything. She, I don't know. She doesn't ask for anything in return. She's just doing it out of the goodness of her heart. And Mom is in an, ep- an episode in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One of her fits. 
Which I get it from Caramon's perspective, just on the surface, things are looking great. Mm -hmm. You got yeah. somebody who is a lonely widow, comes in, gonna take care of mom. Mom hasn't had any episodes. And we do this have some, fine. and we do have some really nice pictures here of mm -hmm. again, just kind of that separation of Raceland from the rest. Now now there's this four person family. Yes. yes. There's the widow oh. Judith, Gillian's home a little bit more. Right. Um, we got mom and Caramon, and they've been living together and well Raceland's been off at school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah this, now now he's very now uh, as this all continues to roll out, we have this idea of you know Raceland is really really feels like an outsider now in his yeah. own family, mm -hmm. and I think it's part because in it talks about how when he first started school he was walking back and yes. forth, but now right. he just stays there. Right. It, it was decided, especially he, during the winter. Yeah, he decided he's like you know what I'm not going to deal with this. I'm just going to stay there, mm -hmm. right. do my schooling. Caramon, you do your work stuff, and mom and dad, well, mom, dad's gone, mom, don't die. Yeah. I feel like Caramon probably likes this, though, because it took some responsibility off of him. Because mm -hmm. he was he was still at home. Right. So when Widow Judith mm -hmm. came in, yeah. his as a 13-year-old, he was finally like, oh, sweet. I'm I do free. feel like you don't get a good beat on what Caramon does with his time. Yeah, Rayson no. is constantly studying. We know Caramon's working on the farm, but it... Kind on the side, so, kind of a social butterfly. I think he's a social butterfly. Oh, is yeah. what I think oh, he is it, on the it, side. It, it, yeah, because yeah. it, 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 we do find out later he'll be stringing like three chicks along. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> and, and he actually during sometimes during the during the winter months he lives at the farm himself. Right, mm -hmm. right. So um, we find out that Raceland, or we find Raceland collects this stinging nettle, and I again to punch home that difference between Caramon the warrior and Raceland the mage. Caramon's like, so why are you picking a nettle? Like why mm. it, it can sting you, it can hurt you. Why would you want it? And Raceland's like, it's like it's like a sword. It's like mm -hmm. you fight with a sword. This is my sword. Like mm -hmm. the knowledge of herb lore and magic is my sword. <laughs> if I can't put it on pizza, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't this doesn't Caramon also see his brother kind of getting bullied by by them? And he's like, yeah. let me let me go take care of him for you. Let me go. Right. Let me go handle this situation for you, but Raceland's just like, eh, I, I got this. Mm, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I do like because this. you'll just befriend them afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you'll beat yeah. them up, and then you'll be their friends. But you know what I like? There's a... Uh, Margaret, gosh, I love some of the stuff she writes. She writes this whole scene where Raceland sees the nettle wilting in the light of the sun, mm -hmm. and he wraps it to try to protect it. That's Raceland's rest of his life. Yeah. He will be this prickly nettle wrapped away from the sun. Yeah. Like yeah. this, it's That's this really illusion good. to his life. I, I really liked it. Like I read that, I'm like, God, Margaret, <laughs> you're so good. Get it, girl. <laughs> you get it, girl. I just want to <laughs> high five Margaret all the time. <laughs> so chapter two, we get a glimpse of summer vacation with the Majer boys. Is this the time where they tell us that this is like the highest point of their life. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like this is the the summer here, chapter two. Probably one of the happiest. One, one of the of happiest. The, one yeah. of the happiest in their mundane lives. Not their like, once they get further on into the autumn twilight where they're going off. I feel like. That'd be pretty fulfilling. Been, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is just kind of. Like, I took down a god. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was a god for a little while. I took down But pretty, one. pretty unsettling. Well, and I love yeah. this beginning. I love this end of spring, beginning summer description of yeah. the school, too. It's warm in the building. The students keep nodding off. And eventually, even Theobald is like, we're not getting anything done. Everybody go home for a couple weeks. This sounds really yeah. familiar. Uh, this is so <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's really hot. Nobody cares. We're going out There's... to swing, kids. Yeah, all right. Uh, let's uh, playground. Let's go. Besides, yeah. um, I've been summoned to the Wizard's Conclave. Uh, yeah. Very important. Because I, the principal very wants important. to see me. Yeah. I'm yeah. Very, the superintendent. <laughs> superintendent hey, wants meetings to see always me. happen. The Tower of Wirreth. <laughs> <laughs> so we have eight weeks holiday. And Rayson's happy, he gets to go home for a little bit. And we find that uh, Caramon's just flirting nonstop. Yep. Oh, yeah. uh, but Rayson is not happy, though, necessarily. He doesn't trust this widow Judith. Like, how, he's he, she's making mom better, but how? Like, she's not a magic user. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and he's not trusting this at all. Well, you do get kind of a, something that I think a lot of people who read this, um, there's a lot of people who are big fans of Rayson, and there's this whole he can't connect with his father. Mm -hmm. Kind of thing, and I think a lot of people key in on that, right? Kind of like I feel sometimes Raceland is an analog for like long haired kids super into metal. Who oh, see, I was going, I was <laughs> like, who didn't get along with their dads who were like, cut your hair, 
Good job. Shut up, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> like I feel like that's how, right. Like and, people like Raceland. And see, I was I was going see I was going and I'm probably projecting enough of my own into this. Yeah. Don't, get, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. My 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 father is a great person. My dad is great. Yeah. Right. I I I grew up being the arts kid. Right. Yeah. And my that's da- what I think it is. My, my dad fully supported it, and he was at every show. He was at every concert. He was at everything else. But, but you didn't I, have a lot I'll, to talk about the table. But, the table. But, but I always felt I always felt that he didn't he 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 was there to support his kid. Yes. But I always felt like he kind of didn't understand. Yeah, no, you know, and there is that, and yeah, there's I agree. the whole family is are the is this blue collar family. Yeah, even you, you know, and Raceland's Raceland's the arts kid who he's good at his stuff over here, but doesn't really understand what the you know. Caramon's talking about like plows and tractors and all kinds of other stuff and yeah. Raisin's like I have no idea what you're talking about right. this must yeah. be what it feels right. like when I talk to you right. and, we yeah. know, and we know stereotypes don't apply I mean like Klob you play Dungeons and Dragons but you're like you know volunteer fire to Fighter and and like I'm a play, pay, I am a paid on call yeah. fire. Oh, sorry, uh, <laughs> paid on call fire. I'll edit that. Say that again. No. So, Glob, uh, you're a paid on call fire to fire guy. Pa- uh, paid on call is basically volunteer. Okay, so um, there you go. I just, um, I, they just throw me some beer money every now and then. And and <laughs> and good at playing hockey, right? You know, like Luke, very successful at what you do. Like everybody who plays Dungeons and Dragons isn't in this like little nerdy box, but the stereotype out there, correct? Right. I oh, think yeah. this plays into that. This idea again, like, hey, so I had all these brothers, and they were all into hunting and fishing, and Dad was all about that too. And then you're the one because Dungeons and Dragons is very much about pouring over books. Yes. And, like that's what Raceland is. Mm-hmm. He's like weirdly in his room pouring over books. Dad doesn't understand, and this makes mm-hmm. complete yeah. sense to people who are. Yeah. Like how are you? How are you going to get a job with that? <laughs> and that's <laughs> what do you? What? What do you? What? What? What job are you going to get with your liberal? Which, with your liberal arts degree? Which okay, <laughs> I'm going to def- I'm going to defend the well, '80s dads, but in because in a lot of ways it's like 1977, 1980. Computer revolution hasn't happened. Uh, everybody kind of works manually for a living, mm-hmm. you know, manual yeah. labor, and your kids upstairs constantly pouring over fictitious books about magic spells. There is a time where you're going to look at your mom and go, like, your wife, and be like, so what is Junior going to do? He's got <laughs> like, to like, leave the house at he's some point. He can talk about books. It's about all we got. We now know for. all those nerds became programmers, and yes. there's this whole other industry that they... And I, I, and I also <laughs> want to point out here too. Yeah, yes, I was projecting that, but my father was a teacher. So yeah, <laughs> it, was, it, it was one of those things that he understood the liberal art, yeah, the liberal art oh, stuff. Oh, for sure. But it was it, 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 there is that aspect, yeah, and you see that with a lot of kids, yeah. and you see that with a lot of you know different people where you know the kid. My son, my son's interested in basketball. Yeah, I am so and not a basketball. basketball. <laughs> I am so not a basketball guy, yeah. but I go to games and I, I watch and we work and I help him out. I help him out, I help him out as best I can. Yes, but like when we play one on one, he totally schools me at basketball. Right. Yeah, no. and he's twelve. No, I, I get it. <laughs> but there, there is that, and there's that separation. And for Raceland, it's even more yes. because yeah. of yeah. because of kind of that personality of who he is. He's he. It almost feels like he's adopted. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. No, yeah. I agree. He's we, that odd child. He's the odd child of the family. We also find that Rayson weirdly likes Discord. Like when things get too easy going, he likes to mess it up. Mm-hmm. Like he likes to create that strife. He, likes, he just likes to manipulate. Yeah. That, that is his key thing that I that it follows him throughout the entire book and through Caramon and, and all the books. Well, and what's followed him throughout his entire life is nothing. Is is this idea that nothing good lasts? Yes. yes. Yeah. That yeah. not, there's always going to be another yeah. shoe to fall. Why should I be? Why should I be happy with what's going on right now? Yeah. Or why should I be happy by where I am right now? Because eventually something's going to happen. When yeah. is Judith going to rock? Well, and Judith, when is, Judith doesn't like yeah. that he does magic. Oh, she hates magic. Yeah. yeah. Then that, that's a whole Belzor. Yeah. So little. let's talk about this. Is very weird. Uh, I like Dragonlance has this interesting schema going for it, where there's the gods of light, neutrality, and darkness. Right. And I don't think that Raceland's mom is wrong when I read this in being worried for her son going down a dark path. Because, like, think about it. Your kid's, like, 13. Is it here where he starts visiting Weird Megan? Yes. Like, yeah. At some point, he starts visiting Weird Megan. So, like, he's weirdly, 
Like, I'd be cool with him collecting herbs. I'd be really into it. But then you're like, he's weirdly doing things that are kind of darker. He's visiting Weird Megan. At one point, we learned, like, Weird Megan has, like, a skull. Yeah, on her. she's skull. got a body she's putting she's together like on her body. kitchen she's, table. Right. Like, I would not be okay I, with my 13-year-old daughter going down to Weird <laughs> Megan's to play with the body she's putting Random together facts, on the table. Our school has one in a first grade classroom. <laughs> <laughs> I, I audibly <laughs> laughed at Weird Megan. Yes. I love Weird Megan. I love Weird so Megan. Megan. She's that, like, crazy lady that... When you're a kid, everybody had a rumor about like if you can't, you don't go in that yard because she'll start throwing crap at you. Or well, it's just such a it's such a crap name, but like, but it is a crap name. But how do you make it fantasy like? You spell it weird, weird Megan. <laughs> yeah, but but when they when they uh you know, but when the townspeople need her, yeah, as a healer, they're they wh- she is wh- she is that, a stereotypical witch. She is the witch. Yes. you know she she where she she knows the arcana of of herb lore and all that kind of stuff. Basically, she's got a body because what she's doing is learning how the human body works. Yeah. She's learning anatomy and physiology the old way <laughs> by Let's ripping go dig apart some bodies. bodies. Right? Yeah. Uh, so I like weird Meg- Megan as well, mm-hmm. but I. I don't fault Rayson's mother for for wa- not wanting her son to go down this dark path because what I think I don't want to say it's a trouble that I have with Dragon Lance, but I do find it a weird universe that you would have good mages and evil mages that are like kind of weirdly okay with each other being around. I think you know what I'm just, saying? I without there being the, more of a fight than there is, it's the style of how they show the magic. Right. It talks about how the magic users don't like each other. They the good. The white magic users might not right. like the black magic users. Wow, that sounds really bad. <laughs> <laughs> As I say that, I'm like, wow, that sounds terrible. But what do you feel about the reds? <laughs> Red magic users. I feel, like, I feel, they're, more, I feel they're more down to earth. They're more <laughs> touch the earth to the nature. They're more connected with Don't nature. get me started on the yellow ones. <laughs> <laughs> but it's yellow, yellow I'll show and, myself and, out. Hey, so. just, just don't put the yellow mage in charge of driving the cart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god! No, that's that's. It's it's just. Can you it, Tokyo drift a horse cart? <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> Why are you? Stop! <laughs> Get out! Uh, no, it's it's one of those where they talk about how they need that balance, and yes. they, they that's the reason they put up with each other because the cataclysm showed you can't have just one person in charge. You right. can't have just that one person in charge right. to rule over everybody else. But to me, it does bring up the question of what, so what is evil and what isn't evil? Like a problem that I sometimes have with even modern Star Wars is it's trying to blend good and evil. And I, a lot of times like the old narrative of just there is good and there is evil mm-hmm. sometimes. And there can be instead, gray in between. Instead of that balance. Instead of that balance. Yeah. Cause I don't get, I, agree. I don't always get the idea of balance. Like, so you have a dark mage who is doing something that is evil, but you're like, eh, but we need him around because it keeps the balance. But right, like, like but, I don't but get none that of, concept. But see, I look at it this way: is none of none. It's 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 a point of view. Not and, if you're like Weird Megan. Okay, well, actually, Weird Megan's doing okay things. I hope yes. it's a dead body, and, and I Weird hope Megan, she got it legally. Yes. <laughs> but, yes. But, I mean, she might have done a little uh, bit of grave uh, di- grave digging. But like, if you're weirdly digging. summoning demons and doing like, I don't. She's I think not what, weirdly what, no, demons. Weird Megan isn't. But I'm saying like, when you travel, I'm going with all of Kryn, and you have. Dark magicians, right? So what are they doing that is considered dark? We're never, I don't think, given actual insight into what evil are they doing a whole lot. Like, to me, when you say dark magician, they're manipulating people. They're causing death to people that shouldn't happen. Like, it's evil. So, like, why are you allowing that for the sake of balance? They talk about it in the book. They talk about the the one witch that got... Murdered because she was started handing out funny money. Yeah. Where she started bring, well, giving out. Well, that's what they say. They think that's, what they that's think. why she okay. died. But it's one of those where I think. But she set up in a town and like she was just using her skills to do dark stuff. But also like she would like kill rats for the people. Yeah, in the town. it's it's yeah. one of those like I think it's kind so of that death, balance of like as long death. as so yeah. a white mage would never kill a rat. I th- and yeah. I think you're getting well, no. no but <laughs> I think she's, getting... she's doing dark mage things, but also blending right. in. And also, I think like maybe necromancy. She she might have yeah. used some of the dead bodies. She but was nothing. okay with doing it. Yeah. yeah. I, and I think you're getting too caught up in this idea of white and of white being good and black being evil. 
Yeah. It's not necessarily the idea of evil. It's how you're going about the magic. How you're using the magic. How you're using the magic. Yeah. Right. And so the reds kind of the reds kind of sit in the middle, but it's the white and the black aren't necessarily good and evil. It's how it's what you're doing and who you're subscribing to with the magic. Okay. Because we're not dealing with God and Satan here either. Right. No. We're yeah. dealing with. Uh, you know, we're dealing with the three gods of magic, right? Who make up who make up the spectrum, who make up the balance of the force, or whatever yeah. it is. But it's not it, just because you're black mage. That means that's your flavor, right? That yeah. does. That's it, it. It's more along the lines of that's how you're. Cho- that's how you've chosen to or chosen or been cho- been chosen right. to practice your magical capabilities where your skill set lies. Right. The white has this skill set, and the red kind of has a skill set of a little bit of everybody. Right, it's but, not ne- it's not necessarily good and evil. So it's probably a weird holdover then that like again with a book like this then the dark the dark mages are always kind of written though more evil. Mm. Oh White yeah, is always written more good. You know, kind of mm. I think. Par- par- come yeah. on, Parsalian and the head of the Black Order have been banging for years. Right. <laughs> it's true. That's well, true. no, they, their... they did previous to this book, and I think they rekindle later on after yes. this book. That's because right. Lunatari chicks are way more fun. <laughs> well, <good> job. <laughs> job. <laughs> but um, they're gonna be willing to try ways. So, are we moving into chapter three? Right. We kind of bounced back. I feel like we, we kind of had skipped over that. There's a conversation with Parsalian and Antimides. No, oh, about okay. the stuff. I don't remember where it is, but it's definitely in this book. We also yeah. totally skipped over uh, Caramon trying to teach Raceland how to get Fort chicks. Girls. Yeah. Oh, I, was, I didn't put it in. That was the <laughs> so t- a weird moment of like Caramon. That I'm just I'm just reading through that, just going. She right. she called me your baby brother. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I just thought the entire thing was funny. Mm, As yeah, I'm reading through it, I'm like, I could see two brothers having this conversation. Dude, you, dude, you gotta be nice. Yeah, you gotta be yeah. nice. You smile dude, at dude. her. You puff up your chest, and yeah. then you throw an axe yeah. at a tree, and yeah. chicks dig that. Yeah, that's true. It's great. <laughs> Just, hey, 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 go, go talk to her. Go, have you, have go, you ever go, go touch a girl? See that redhead over there? She said she, said she thought you were a little cute. <laughs> yeah. Totally a sibling thing I could see. Raceland reminds me, I did have one friend, like, when we were in uh, middle school into high school, who was like a super emotional, very Raceland actually. He's kind of more sickly mm. and whatnot, very Raceland like. And that's how it was like the amount of agony and talking about a girl that would happen over the phone when we were together and everything like that. And then, like, the one word that was spoken, like, it would be like one word spoken to a girl over here, and that dovetailed into hours of conversations and analyzing how that word went. Yikes. And then it'd come back to one more. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> You well, know what I'm saying? And Raceland here. And Raceland too. feels like that. He's very out of step with kind of And he has the such ladies. and he has and again, he he's talk. he's no. strong and he I mean he's already strong in, in his bookish life. Yeah. In his bookish life and his studying, he's got that down. Yeah. This is the part of his this is a part of his life where I, this is not in my wheelhouse. I am so uncomfortable doing all these. Uh you're 13, you got stuff going on. Right, right. Um that's beyond your control a lot of times. <laughs> but and yeah. it's just like no. No, I have to be in control. I always have to be in control. Right. That's chaos. I'm not dealing with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and so, yeah, because it's not something you can manipulate. Love is too difficult. You can't manipulate that. Well, I guess you could. <laughs> yeah. um, That's how people get shot. So, are we going into chapter three? Sure. Chapter three, Why it's not? winter, and the boys at school are roughhousing around outside, and Raceland has this quiet thinking spot that he yes. goes to in yep. the pines. And and again, you you mentioned you mentioned uh, the whole idea of the Scrooge story of the Scrooge yeah. story earlier. That you know, this is that this is that flashback scene where Scrooge, all the all the boys are outside playing, and Scrooge is sitting at the desk alone. Right. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Because but, my studies are more important than your trivial so children's So I games. might be wrong, but I'm seeming to remember a thing in the annotations that Margaret Weiss is a huge fan of. Didn't we bring this up yeah, on another yeah, podcast? Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's a huge fan of the of that story, Ebenezer Scrooge. So mm-hmm. I think she is very intentionally alluding to it here. Okay. Um, I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. He's Scrooge. He's, yeah. yeah, he's got He'll his own place. Money. He's surprised that the other boys aren't like ruining it with yeah. dumping their chamber pots or stealing his log that he likes to sit on. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, right. But yeah, we do get a little a little peek behind the curtain of yeah. Raceland, where he's you know he the boys are leaving him alone. He kind of like he likes that because they respect him, but also like he's he lonely. misses the attention. Right. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, it's agree. it's it's they're 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 a little afraid of me, and I'm okay with that. But ever since the nettle leaf incident, yes, yeah. right, which I don't think we really covered. Well, so he used that nettle leaf. One of the guys that was bullying him at school, they had to like, what what herbs did you get over your well, summer vacation? <laughs> a little horticulture presentation. Yes. <laughs> oh well, I found this herb, and he sticks it. The bully kid sticks his hand in the pocket, and like his hand like blows up, and he has an allergic reaction. Yeah, Raceland used his uh, tricks to just right. slip it in there. Yeah, a little sleight like of hand. Yeah. I like it. He rolled pretty well on that one. And then we move into chapter four, which is what our opener was, right? Stinger. Where they all, the the stinger. They take the test. Uh, they have to write the words, uh, mm. may, I this may is, just... This is not the test. This no. is a test. a test. Not the test. Yes. The We're first test. This is a yeah. test of like, hey, are you good enough to act- for do me to have, actually try uh, to teach yeah, you? Yeah, do you have the innate... Yeah. I just want to be a butcher. <laughs> oh, Gordo. <laughs> Lucky Gordo, that's what you get to do. However, you are constantly monitored. I, I remember reading through that yes. and they're saying, like, anybody that took any of the classes, they still are monitoring them to make sure they don't turn into racist. But or... they're not going to tell him that. No, no, they don't tell him So I, I'm forgetting, and I'm sure fans will be screaming at their radios, whatever, but... <laughs> radios? Uh, at well, the be... radio? <laughs> hey, I play it through my car. <laughs> yeah, I play it through my car, so yeah. I'm always thinking of a radio. Yeah. Uh, I play podcasts that way. Uh, but... We, he knows he's successful, and this will be a thing throughout the book, because he writes it on the lambskin and it starts to glow, mm-hmm. or lights up, whatever. Is that a thing? As, have we seen that before? What, no, what does that and, mean? And it's, it, so, that mean? it's so low level. I'm just assuming that this is like some sort of like illumination spell, or like... Well, but other spells magic. he will deal with farther down the road here in this book, they will also illuminate. That's how he yeah. knows. I just, that I just think it right. shows that like the gods... Like a detect magic spell? Yeah, I just, it's, maybe. It's, what it is is, if, is if, how I read it, and I yeah. believe I'm correct on this one, uh, is in order for the scroll to work... Yeah, every you know everything has to be written perfect so perfectly yeah. on the, the scroll. It lighting up tells you that it's cool. It burning yeah. it's it, it's cool because what it, what yeah. what happens with the scroll is it's no longer just the blood, right? As the ink, it if you do it and you do it perfectly and you have the magic skill, you've burned the spell into the scroll. Mm-hmm. Now. Yeah, right. It's, and I think it's just and that so when Gord sorry Paul no, so when Gordo like writes sloppily writes his thing out and he's got ink yeah. all over his <laughs> hand and scratches out right. Magos yes. <laughs> but so okay so this leads me to a bigger question and this is I guess super naive on my part about yeah. how magic works here in this universe I haven't been paying attention I guess but so is this how it works being made because that's what how I took it club they know they got it right they wrote everything perfectly it lights up they're like boom and it's it's now inputted into the system. So, right, they don't ever have to do that again, right? Like, that means they got it right, they put it in their spell book, and it's a spell they can use over and over again? There's a, It's a difference between scrolls and your spell book. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Your, spell, your spell book, is, scroll, scrolls are meant to be, and please chime in here, yes. Luke, because you have more knowledge One and about done, this than I do. They're a grenade. S- scroll, you, no, the scroll you can reuse and the scroll you can actually, like, sell to other mages. Okay. Uh, your spell book is your spell book. You don't always have I'm to still write not, it down. So do you have to unroll the scroll? You have to read from the scroll Scrolls to use it? Scrolls will... When you read a scroll, it fizzles it and it's gone. Yeah. Okay. But what... So really, I think what they're doing here is they're trying to figure out if these kids have the ability to... And I, I think when you're writing magical script, it's less about writing words and it's more about making shapes. Right. Can you make the shapes that are, correctly, and, that are and can you call upon those shapes to do something? In okay. Dungeons & Dragons, specifically the earlier versions of Dungeons & Dragons, when you made a scroll uh, as a wizard, didn't it used to like take your level lower, like use your experience points? I know... Uh, in 3.5, yes. In 3.5, Which is way, probably why Rayson talks about being tired always. Yeah, so it's, doing... it's kind of a way of saying, Correct. like, hey, well, and, a and, of... and And in 3.5, which is what, where I played a majority of my wizard class... If you're going to make a scroll, it takes, like, so much of a day to yeah. do it. And you can't be doing anything else. Correct, because okay. you have to get everything perfect. Mm-hmm. And, like, for, like, my... I've You've written scrolls for me yes. for my fighter where it's, you know, levitate or breathe water or something mm-hmm. to, where, to, where, to where there's some, there's <laughs> fly, some spell yeah. that me as a non-magic user 
right. are able to use. There's other things that other magicians are able to use. Okay. If you don't, you know, if you don't have the skill for this particular fire spell, but you have like some certain levels, you can use a scroll written by the dude who has the high mm-hmm. skill for the magic. Yeah, yeah. and you it, can that, cast that putting, and, and like and like what he says, where you're taking not just the blood of the lamb and your blood and, and your blood, and you're putting it into it. You're kind of like putting that spell into that thing. Yep. Okay. And you have to have the ability that's to why, do that perfectly. That's why me as a wizard could put a spell into a scroll and hand it to Claude the fighter. And then he could, okay. Yeah. So and that's why Gordo though. is not able to, he's not able to imbibe the scroll, which is which is the basest of all of most, ma- of most magic. I also think it's just a way of saying like, when it flashes, it's just the god, the moons saying, "Yeah, you're good. You, you, you got it. You, you passed the it. test." Yeah, it's just the moons kind of going, "You're good." Well, thank you. You uh, illuminated that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I get to go be a butcher now. <laughs> Book three, uh, chapter one. Raceland tries to cast a sleep spell on old poor Caramon, throws sand in his face, but it doesn't work. Raceland is such an ass. That's poor I spell fizzled. <laughs> I love it. That poor guy. Master Theobald finds him later writing the sleep spell down. Um, hold on just a second. Raceland's 16 at this point, isn't it? We, we once again skip a few more years. Yeah, we? I think so. I think every book, and I do like how she broke this up. I was a little, when I first opened the book and saw yeah, that you, there were you, you, six you were, books. You were ahead of me, Paul. I was and like, you told me that like, you're, you're reading through book one, and then book two was like a blip, and it was gone. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, so I'm just prepared for it when I'm reading. <laughs> like, it was one of those where, as I was reading through it, I'm like, well, I, I do they are like... Log- they are logically yes, separated. Yes, there's yes. logic right. as to how they were separated versus some other books that we've read where there really isn't logic. It's just, here, we're going to jump here. True. So, I, I did like, I wrote down to, to reference it, um, what Master Theobald says to Raceland when the spell doesn't work. He says, it didn't work, I take it. I'm, I'm not surprised. You are far too proud, young man. Far too self-absorbed, self-satisfied. You are a taker, not a giver. Everything flows into you. Nothing flows out. The magic is in the blood. It flows from the heart. Every time you use it, part of yourself goes with it. Only when you are prepared to give of yourself yes. and receive nothing back will the magic work for you. I missed this kind of on the first read through, and now I'm thinking about it now. Um, as we get into book four and five, Rayson will do some extreme, a lot of giving of himself. Yeah. And I was thinking, boy, is he giving of himself? Now I'm reading this That's going, why. that is why. Yeah. Like, is he giving? A, he's not doing it for altruistic reasons. He is doing it because his master told him. This magic isn't working because you're not giving of yourself enough. He's like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go join the Salvation like, Army. The- <laughs> <laughs> not because they're good, but because I want to be able to use. Theobald magic. is very well written to where you, you yes. get that little like glimpse into him when they they appoint him to being a teacher. Like, well, he's not gonna be any good for anything else. He won't make any good wizards, but he will bring wizards up to the level that they would have been. Right. Yeah. Anyway, and it, and that that sort of thing too, where, where he says that to Raceland, and like. And Raceland has been like very much like sifting through the sand to find those gems of knowledge. Right. Like he's saying so much nothing. But then like, <laughs> especially like when they're going, I, I really, I love, I'll bring, I'm bringing it back to like book one here when he's talking about like how to pronounce stuff. Right. And Raceland's just like daydreaming. He's like, wait, what? Oh, that's a thing. Like he's, yeah, <laughs> writes his notes really quickly. Yeah. Something important. Yeah, he's Finally. Seen- He's sitting there. It's similar to going to a lot of business conferences or I know for teaching conferences along that line where you go for about two or three days and you come back with that one <laughs> One nugget. One, <laughs> one nugget. good nugget. You're gone for a few that days, but that one nugget is actually I important. Think most trainings, that's what it boils down yeah. to. Yeah. Eight hours of training for two, maybe one, two golden nuggets. Yep. And that's all it uh, But... We were a little bit ahead of ourselves, uh, Paul. Chapter two is the golden summer, uh, oh. where, where they are 16 and everything is going so well. Raceland is known for his big old herb garden. He's yep. good at the herb lore. Mother and Judith are odd, but everything's going well. They keep going we to should, visit the neighbors. We yep. should. Uh, something a little weird in this book is the references to Raceland's big blue eyes. Yeah. Which is just so odd. Because well, I think because the, it's going to juxtapose it when he finally gets his hourglass on. And, and, that, and that's <laughs> it. And that's it, too. It's just like he has these piercing blue eyes. And I'm like, that's so weird to read that. Yep. Being, and, and I I had a, I was texting with a, a friend when I was reading this book. Like, hey, you know, I, God, I just, I just spent like 
hours reading this book, like, and I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> um, they asked me what it was. I'm like, well, it's, I'm like, and I had to like justify to somebody who didn't know what I was doing. Um, I'm like, I'm like, well, I'm like seven books deep in the series from the eighties. <laughs> 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 like it's kind of, um, a little odd. So yeah, yeah I agree. Uh, let's talk about Belsor. The, this god. Belsor. Belsor. It's not bed, Bedsor. You're Bedsor. You're Bedsor. You're Bedsor. You're Bedsor. I said Belsor. Did I say it wrong? No. I don't know. I mispronounce I things all the time. We'll say Belsor. Belsor! If, if there's one person that cannot judge on mispronouncing I, names, <laughs> it is me. I, I am terrible There's been a few uh, BL limes in. Uh, <laughs> Belsor. Uh, Double Earth of God, Belsor. This it, all seems very realistic to me, and I'll, I'll tell you what struck home for me. Um... You know, being very familiar, not on a personal level, but I like stuff to do with like religion and things like that. And so that whole, there's this whole like faith healing community, right? That's a part of Christianity. Um, and at its most extreme, right? You've probably all seen the whole thing of the people who would, I think it's some Southern churches who mm. they take up snakes, yep. pr- incredibly yep. poisonous We're not snakes. There yet. We're not there yet. But Belsor's is going to be depicted as a snake, and that's kind of what's going to happen. Is this this at a small scale? We're still at the we're still at the Jehovah's Witness portion. That's true. Where it's like faith. This is faith healing, and she's just like, "Hey, have faith in Belsor because Gillian is injured." Right? Is this and where Gillian gets injured? Gillian gets injured because it's in the this go- book for sure. Well, well and we, this is the chapter. Oh. Um, well, and we find out we find out here too that part of the reason why uh, the widow Judith and Mom have been going over to the neighbors as they've been having little. They've been having little private Belzor services. Well, right. Bible studies. But but right. I want to get into Belzor this studies. whole faith Belzor healing studies. part where Gillian, their father, is injured and he ends up A dying. Tree fell on him. Yeah, and the whole time because you know Mom has been into Belzor, Belzor, and and Judith is like, well, if you just have enough faith, he'll be healed, and well, then he dies. Yeah. Right. And so the only thing you can. The only recourse she has is, well, you didn't have enough faith. Yeah. Right? Like, you're not a true believer. You didn't have enough faith, and your kid's a magic user. It's because of him. Yep. Burn him. And I will. Your daughter's a whore. Your son's a witch. It's it's awful things. Oh, yeah. But you know what? I will say this rings true. This this is a scene that steps out of fantasy realm and is as fantasy as it is. This happens in people's houses. Absolutely. I will tell you that I know for a fact that there are people who this happens to where dad or mom or somebody comes down with an awful disease and that family will not go to doctors, will not seek out help, and they will just constantly go with, we are going to faith heal this faith. We trust that it's going to be... And then the person dies and that is exactly what well, is said yep. behind the scenes sister was a whore you also, it was because yep, he yep. was a drinker he did whatever or yeah. they didn't have enough faith it's, yep. it's yep. kind of sick you, you also know what you can't you know also know what you can't heal by faith polio <laughs> <laughs> vaccinate your damn kids <laughs> go get your vaccinations y'all but this this rolls right into part of the anti, the anti-vaxxer movement too yeah the, well what, if, 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 if you have if we if you have enough faith in god you know you don't have to vaccinate your children yeah 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 because yeah, yeah. there's a whole there's a whole very faith-filled movement with the anti-vaxxers because i was shocked because i thought anti-vaxxers i had a big view that they were all kind of very hippie like that was all a very environmentalist, uh, very hippie kind be. of thing, which there's, they very much can like be. Different levels of anti vaxxers Yeah, yeah. There's anti vaxxers that are like the Hollywood hippie. The, I, I don't whatever. want any of those chemicals in my kids. There's also but very because I, I know very chemicals cons- in my in my kids, but I'm going to put an egg in my vagina. I know very conservative <laughs> Christian types that are also. Oh, yeah. It is weird to me how I am seeing because I travel in many communities and I <laughs> see how like super liberal. Uh, crazy leftists and super li- uh, conservative crazy writers yes. are actually dovetailing and meeting in the bottom somewhere at the middle. Yes. A lot of their beliefs. It's really as long weird. as the kids don't have vaccines, man. <laughs> it's fine. Sorry for getting political on this fantasy less, podcast. Less of a spectrum, more of a circle. Hey, <laughs> measles are very... Measles are important. Let's not... I'm, let's, I, uh, the, yeah, the fact that you, polio can come yeah, back is polio absolutely can back. freaking However, ridiculous. However, I do like after, after the death of Gideon... Is that who it was? Gillian. Yes. Gillian. 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 Uh, we get to meet a few well-known characters. Oh, uh, well, I do. I do. Yes. It's a great bring-in to where the community comes together, and we get the dwarf, we get the little kinder, I believe, even. Yeah, Taz is there. And well, and Tannis, Tannis, even, even yep. Tannis shows up and is, yep. shut up, woman. <laughs> yeah. You don't know what you're talking. How yeah. about you leave? 
Yeah. <laughs> it's the entire you town. You do that. The entire town comes together and knows they're in pain because you know what? We know these people. We've lived with them our entire life. You random crazy lady, get out. Well, it's right. like Tasselhoff like comes like backflips into the scene, like sheds a tear real quick, and then he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little task. Hey, well, hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, oh, that's sad. <laughs> Look, and he's gone. Hey, that's a dead body. I haven't seen a dead body. Wow, he got hit by a tree, didn't he? Oh, that's Caramon's dad. Right. Oh, that's sad. Um, oh, shiny. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, piece of candy. It's Ooh, piece of candy. In character. In on, on brand. It is. It is Tass. But chapter three, now I am super conflicted about what I believe even about this chapter. So help me through with this. Yes. This is where, mother, in the aftermath, mom relapses. Yep. Cara, uh, uh, Raceland is taking care of her. And again, you read it. And at first, Raceland is being incredible. Uh, yeah. taking care of her, brushing her hair, cleaning her, doing all of those caregiving kinds of things. And I'm like, and for me, on my first read through, I'm like, this is why Caramon will forever defend Raislin to the death. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, he he went above and beyond and was taking care of his, like, this only happens between Raislin and Caramon. Nobody else sees what happens well, here. And so Caramon is like, you don't understand my brother. My brother is a caring, loving person. You should have seen him when he took care of my mother. But now thinking about it in the light of, but he was just told in the chapter or two before that you're not giving of yourself. That is why your magic doesn't work. So is Raislin... Oh. Yeah. So is Raceland doing this for the right reasons or is he not? And I don't know. Maybe he's doing both. I, I, I don't I, know. I, th- I think you're right and I like that read on it, but yeah. I think it is both because, again, these were two... You look at Caramon and you look at Raceland and these were two completely different twins. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, and this also happens in families too right. where a lot of times you tend to gravitate a little bit more towards the parent you're more like. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so even Caramon, even we, we get a quick bob into Caramon's head during all this where Caramon's like, I don't really know how I'm supposed to feel about this. Oh, I like this. So I Rayson was, can key in on Mother more because correct. Mother is like him. Yeah. Correct. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like that. But Ray, there, there is, but, and Caramon was so devastated when Gillian died. Yeah. Whereas Raceland, Raceland was more reserved about when Gillian died. Yeah, oh, I like that. And this is, what the, you know, because Raceland w- was closer to his mom, Caramon was closer to dad. Right. And we did get um, before... I like that. The last time the last time before Raceland went back to school um, and he had been home and the, Hamley, the, the Hamley's all family. Yeah. The, the family's all happy. <laughs> Uh, the family's all happy, and it's kind of like a family without him, and he's he's super jealous. Yes, that his mother is getting on without him. Right, and there's a little bit about she doesn't want him to leave at the end of it. The, the, it she she tries to get him to yeah, give up the magic. Yeah, right. for sure. But I, I, I feel mean, because I, of those weird religious reasons. Yeah, it wasn't for. But the, also, but the, the, I I was more keying in on him being jealous that his mother was getting on without right. him. And I, I just mm-hmm. love Margaret's writing here and the way she gets into these two brothers. Mm-hmm. And already I'm yeah, feeling are... I'm feeling so much differently about Raceland and Caramon and their relationship that that's what I'm saying. I don't know what order to read these things because I was pissed at the end of Legends. Mm-hmm. And, the way, and the way and the way Caramon and Raceland were, but some of it I thought was crappy writing. Right, mm-hmm. okay. like, like I didn't, I didn't get why Raceland was doing some of the things, why Caramon was putting up with some of it. If I had had this, I would have seen that all in a different light. It's like I want to it, read Legends again in the light of this, but this book won't be very interesting I if you think, haven't read any of those. Books. I think that's <laughs> why she wrote it, this book the way it, the way she did is it explains why Raceland was acting the I way agree. it was. So I, I think it was for yes. the people like you that were sitting there going. Why? Yeah. Why, you care, Mon, are you still putting up with this? Then yes. she goes, here you go. This is why. Yeah. I, I was looking at them as two archetypes that the authors were just keeping locked into their two schemas and were not coming out of. And yeah. I'm like, damn you. <laughs> this is yeah. not good. And I get it now. Like, I really, I, I really I mean, like mind that. you, it's so many years later. She is, uh, yeah. she, she is also yeah. out on her own. Yeah. She I, is. And I, honestly, I honestly think that, like, she brought all the good things to this uh universe. Yeah, I would yeah. I don't I actually don't know. I've never looked. Did Hickman write any book 
alone. I wonder what that would look like. Mm. Then we could I we could really tell. That <laughs> would be a very, yeah. We could tell if he's the, if he's the Charlie of the group. I do have some of his standalone other books. So I'll go check them out. So I think it's Charlie, she, right? So he won't leave her side. No. she's dying. Caramon's just kind of Caramon's just kind of like wandering around the house doing stuff. Right. Mm. Um. And there is the drop in here in this chapter two of that, that explains exactly what I was talking about, yeah. where it's Caramon loved his mother. That's what a good son is supposed to do, and I am a good son, so right. I love my mother. Yeah. Right. But However, I don't, but I don't know what to do. He, yeah. It, it does talk about how, yes, he loved his mother. He feels more like Kitty Ara is, is his mother. It talks about yes. it where he goes, but he has more of a relationship with Kitty Ara than anybody else, really. Yeah. Well, and we get to the death scene mm-hmm. here yeah. too. Oh yeah. And I want, <laughs> why do you say it like I want to what? Help? I I, wa- I want I want to <laughs> see, I want to see if you guys why. picked up on this because I, I picked Mom's up. On I didn't write right it as a note, so I probably didn't. We, we get to, we to get to Mom's in. death scene. Yeah, and all and she starts talking to somebody in the doorway, and Rayson's like, "There's nobody in the doorway," and then he looks back. Oh, this it, yes yes this it's is Fizzman. why I went. Oh yeah yes. it's Fizzman. it's Fizzman. it's Paladin it's Fizzman. yeah. Fizzman comes back, and that's she what made me go. She sees a man in a, like a gray oh, yeah. cloak. And yeah, it's a, a, a disheveled old guy with a, a disheveled old guy. A, a disheveled old guy comes in and escorts her to the afterlife. Yeah. It's Fizzman. Yeah, it's Paladine. It's, do you want to come with me? Like, you want me to go with you? You want me to travel with? Or as I say, like, Fizzman and oh, Paladin. Fizzman. <laughs> <laughs> so that that is, I love that. As soon as I saw that, I was like, yep. I there actually like that as well. Yeah, it's, like, it made me go, oh, okay. it's, But they didn't especially, name him. Especially... No, they didn't. They didn't especially say with your knowledge of, like, the flow of time, and maybe he came back as a favor to Raceland. Or something, yes. yes. Yeah, or... You, you know, know what, what, like... Okay. okay, see, now I need to read all of those tril- the trilogies yeah. again, because is there... Is this an illusion? Does he do anything? Does he say anything in those other trilogies that would... Illuminate this a little bit more. Yeah, but he comes to. That's I like. Comes no, to yeah, that's why life. I went. Oh, he yeah. feels yeah. bad. It brought me back. It brought yeah. me. Fizzman the... feels bad about Raceland dying. I mean, like right. he was going to destroy everything, but yeah. Well, I think Fizzman too. I think he maybe he was always. Wasn't that, wasn't, that a, wasn't that a thing? Like when he was like plummeting into darkness, like he Raceland all of a sudden stopped. And that, that and I okay, I'm I'm asking that kind of rhetoric, ta- yeah. rhetorically because I do know that I don't. So keep um, yeah. Because of the war, of, what I've read about the War of Souls, uh, Raceland's soul is kept alive, most likely by Fizzbin Paladine. Ah, okay. Mm. Uh, so maybe this is just him doing a favor for... So are we getting back to our argument about, or our talk, discussion, about at the end of Legends, what happens at the end? Yeah. Because Raceland's in torment, but then is he? There's this then, weird, that then, weird line yeah, at that, the end. About him ha- being, like, having closure. At peace. Being, okay. Calm. At peace, calm peace. Calm within the storm of chaos. Yeah. So mom dies, and now yes. it's just the brothers. Right on. On to chapter four. Kit comes back, obviously. So this is point. so good. This is so I, yeah. I, I love the picture you want, that is being painted. What did, what did you see in your mind, Club? I just want to think. Kit's coming back. She's got leather armor on. What did you Oh, I mean, this is Kit. <laughs> this is this is 18-year-old Kit. Actually, no, she's older than that now. This is like, because the boys are 16, so she's going to be like 23. Yeah, like she this. looks like Joan Jett. Or 22. She looks like Joan Jett. Oh, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's raining. She has a hood on. Her hair is like down and straggly. It's dark. Like, I, I just, I saw this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When you yeah. say that... Weiss comes through this like I'm like a movie camera. Yeah, I saw this. Yeah, yeah, definitely. This was written so well. Yeah. But so Ray's... it's raining at the funeral, and she Kit comes back at the funeral looking all hot and it's like <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> freaking freaking Caramon's like oh, I don't know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then she calls Raceland baby brother. He goes, huh? Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That that kind of like ticks something in the right direction for him. Oh, I get. Oh, but Raceland's. Taken ill, right? Yeah, and yes. we find out that he's been going to the weird to Weird Megan. This is where we find out about Weird Megan, right? For an elixir, more about Weird, Megan. more yeah, about this, Weird yeah, Megan. Is... Well, and, and so and Kitty Ara sends Caramon to Weird Megan yeah. to get the eli- uh, what the elixir of Barkwood or whatever, mm-hmm. which I believe is real. Uh, well, no, which I believe becomes his tea later on. Yeah, that tar bean. Yeah. No, I don't or, think that no. becomes the tea. Uh, no, that, we'll get to the tea. Uh, yeah. We'll get the tea, to the tea, the tea later. The tea, oh, the tea okay. is a re- comes yeah. from something. The tea uh, is a recipe from a uh, uh, salacious salandilos. <laughs> Parsley. Par- 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 salacious crumb. Salacious crumb. Well, that was way too good. 
Parsalian uh, gives him the I'm tea. sorry, I haven't finished the book yet. Leave me no, it's okay. It's, it's okay. It's, right. it's okay. But yeah, so she go. He Caramon goes, and he's like, I gotta go talk to weird man. Again. And this uh, is where, like, where Kit starts getting her weird, playful sexuality about like I've seen men naked. Winky, yep, winky, yeah, winky. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry, brother. I've seen men naked. <laughs> Don't say it like that. <laughs> Don't, uh, Use yeah. different words. That makes and this is really, and this is really where we we have the one com- actual conversation with Weird Megan. Yeah, in the in, in, that we see in the book was yeah. between her and Caramon, and she is just she comes out and she is totally Emma Emma Thompson from the Harry Potter movies <laughs> when Emma Thompson is playing uh, Sybil Trelawney, Trelawney, yeah. where it is just. That. Oh yeah. <laughs> she's, yes. She's yeah. got her big wolf dog or, and then, like, or nobody what's else the, can who's, go near. The, who's the Luna chick? Oh, oh. Lu- Luna Lovegood. Luna Lovegood. Yep. May, uh, that's kind of more my weird Megan. That's what I was saying. Oh, okay. Am I wrong? Is this where Caramel like can kind of see through the door and there's a head on the table? Yes. Is there like yeah. 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 There, there is. There yeah. is. He refuses. Or a skull. A skull. Yeah. skull. She, yeah. she goes like, oh yeah, come on in, come on, my, come uh, in. My uh, wolf won't bite you. I'll just, I'll, but just, I'll come just on stand. In. I'm just gonna stand here in the rain if you can get me what I need, please. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm good here. I like Thanks. it. I like it. Uh, uh, but anyway, chapter five, Kitty Yara is going to start, and she will the rest of this book trying to convince people to go with her to sanction to become a warrior. Hey, Craig, hey, yeah. you guys want to go north? You guys, you guys want to go north? <laughs> It'd be hard hey, to say hey, no. Hey, it would wanna... be hard to say no. I, I, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. I'm, pack, I'm packing it up. I'm selling, I don't, I'm I, selling my house. I don't <laughs> know if I'm that desperate. I don't... <laughs> um, I'm in. She sounds good. I but mean, she is, that, she's... That, that rain-soaked scene with the hood and those dark yeah. eyes. Well, and she seems very world-wise now. She knows, like, hey, Belzor, by the way, is fake. There's oh, yeah. real gods. Uh, you better kind of, you know, look alive, young brothers. Look because, alive, boys. Yeah, you've been in this small town with your small minds, and they're all following There's Belzor. There's other movie theaters except the decor. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, I'm sorry. Wow. <laughs> Nobody's getting that joke. Yeah, wow. Well, there's like maybe two of them. We're right. a small town. We had one theater called the Decora, and it would play movies from like a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> I, Biggest silver screen I, on the range. I saw the Rocketeer there. <laughs> oh, my God. Remember Disney's The Rocketeer? Three Tales? years after it came out. <laughs> like three years movie. after it came out. It's probably, they actually just put a VHS in on it. <laughs> it's probably playing there now. You want to go see the Rocketeer? Um, <laughs> back to the book. Back to the book. So chapter six, Raceland wakes up from from sleep. Yeah, and there's really. Oh, <laughs> hold on. We got to pause this. Clob shows us what is that? Elmore? Is that a good Elmore painting um, of that Kit? Is that's Kit and the Brothers? Yeah, I think it's from the uh, the Preludes books. I think is the co- it's a cover of one of the Preludes yes. books. Yes. Um, nice. Yeah, she's looking fine yeah. and dandy. Mm, Although that doesn't look leather, that looks no. metal. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. But, but, but um, first you must go to Tumblr to find it. Yes. But. I love this in, this scene where we're like, again, like a movie, we wake up and or we, we enter their bedroom, right? Caramon's sleeping and he's like sleeping all spread eagle, like yeah. one leg hanging off the bed. And Raceland's in a weird fetal position in the corner. Oh yeah, he's curled up in a little ball. Very much, with, with it's, it's uh, like, eh. hearkening back to the womb. <laughs> <laughs> Caravan's, Caravan's taking up too much space. Caravan's just sprawling all over the womb. Raceland's just I'll up get, in a corner. I'll get you one day. <laughs> Um, <laughs> no, kind of, kind of the rest of this, like six and seven, really just kind of blend together. We, they really we do, do actually yeah. in chapter six. We see where Caramon starts to show a little bit of the magic. He has a vision. He has, a, yeah, a fit. As yeah, they call he it, does. But like, I guess I don't get it because it doesn't really ever come back. It doesn't come back. And then and and uh, Raceland is pleased by this. But I agree. I, it shows a little bit, though, that Raceland, because Raceland is afraid when he sees his brother doing that. He goes, wait, does he have that? I can't tell anybody about this. Because of what to... we've alluded to yeah. before, this erases his specialness. Exactly. Correct. You know, yeah. Well, now and, and Garamond that, would have it all. And that doesn't make, I guess it doesn't look, just because this is a prequel, I've read what comes after it. And, like, you could have just... I, I don't understand the inclusion of this. Um, I think that... I, I know that he's not magic after this. Yeah. You know, you know what I think? I, I think this is a hammer stroke too much on the nail. Yeah. Like, okay. like Ooh. Margaret has been hammering a lot about the differences between these brothers and stuff. This was just the one hammer stroke that didn't need to fall. And, you didn't need to have this one in And here. see, again, I the way I read this was almost this idea of 
they're twins. They have that, you know, the mystical twin connection. Yeah. And with everything that's been going on with Raceland right now, maybe he this he's he's radiated a little too much on Caravan. Right. Because of the and so therefore this is this is actually it's Raceland's magic, but because of their twin connection, mm. it's like radiated into Caramon for a moment. Ooh. Is this Maybe. is this where the plague comes in? Because is Caramon sick with the plague at this point? Nope. Or is it later on? Yeah. No, no, no. Am I way off Spoilers. on that part? Okay. I don't think so. I not no, that I remember. No, there's no plague. Okay. But um, chapter there is a, there is a plague later on. Yes. But, Chapter um, seven, which is very cursory. Like I don't know, it's it's weird. It doesn't. It's because he's good with the. I'll, run, let, he's I'll good let you with the know when we get there. We'll talk about the plague when we get there. Chapter seven. It's fall. This is the last chapter before book four. Uh, twins are deciding what to do. Rayson feels as if his connections to the past and solace are slipping away. Yeah, I, I feel like his con- he's going with the it, my connections here are gone. I have to move. Yeah, on. mom's the only reason that I come back. Uh, mom's not here anymore. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, Caramon's got the job on the farm. Right. Why? Why are we staying here? She's done a great job, but Margaret and this house has is haunted. Of, of painting this picture of this is true. Caramon could stay here forever, and we'd be fine with it. He's flirting with the girls, and he's got his job on the farm. It's fine. Uh, Raceland is. I'm not going to say bigger than this, but where he needs to go is beyond solace. Yeah. Yeah. He you know? he is the brain that Caramon is lacking. Yeah. Both of them have no reason to stay in this town now. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Right. Um, I I it like this little again. mention of Sturm yeah. we have here. He's He's gone up to join the Knights of Salomnia, mm-hmm. Triton, right? We also get a little bit of a history on, on Huma here, right? Huma. Yeah. Oh, that's right. And you know what? Little... There, was, there was something before this about like the balance of Huma and his magic friend. Yeah. And that's back yeah. in the, the, the conversation between Parsalian and, and Timothy. That, that he had that a battle mage. Yeah, he had a and battle mage And that they, they, don't, they don't cover because the Knights of Salamnia don't like magic, yes. so they don't like to bring up the fact that there was a mage along with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there was a battle mage. There. And then this this brings in when Raceland talks that's about That's got to be a book. Well, I think this comes up later, but now we can't talk about it. Okay. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, later. There'll be more battle mage stuff to come. Yeah. It's, yeah. All in all, I I enjoy this little bit of a data dump. I like this yeah. little data dump because she is definitely referencing. I feel Margaret in her mind thought, and and I I think she gained this that she was writing a book, a prequel book that you could pick up and read as a standalone. I don't know if she was successful in the fact that yeah. it is so into the characters and so into the world that I don't know if you could pick pick and this that, book that, naked that, off the shelf. That's where we're gonna know. lean on our fans. Yeah, one of you has to have started yeah. with this. Soul Forge. You saw Raceland's hourglass eyes staring off the bookshelf, and you were like, <laughs> "I don't know. The, the cover of this book's pretty creepy. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Take me." <laughs> he, he doesn't look like any money in that show. <laughs> <laughs> he does. <laughs> oh. um, okay, so. But I feel like the cover is j- exactly like this book is. It's very understated. It's just a man sitting in a chair. And that's basically. Well, I mean, this book is a very, very ambiguous, much- man. <laughs> And that's kind of how this this book is very understated like yeah. that. There's nothing major that's going to happen. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so we get to the end of book three here. I do I do want... Yeah. I forgot to add in one more th- one more point. This is the point where uh, Raceland talks to Caramon about why he might have a dagger or something along those lines because it, it talks about why mages don't usually carry a big sword or anything, but they have that one dagger because... Right. The mage would not give it up, so then Huma ordered that all mages have that one dagger, which I think is like a nice little add into I like it the too. character mm-hmm. building of mages. And, and we'll see that Raceland will, later on. It will end up getting his little dagger. And this whole yeah. story we'll is talk a, about that in the next episode. This whole story is a shot at Sturm, too. It's like, oh yeah, your big bad don't forget your big bad hero guy of legends needed a magician. Yeah. yeah. I feel like Margaret does not like Sturm because he has given in the whole book he has given the short shrift. Yeah. He is barely yeah, even throughout of, the rest of the book, he just kind of shows up with his mustaches and his. But kind also, of a you know, I don't really dick. know that I ever really liked Sturm. Uh, Sturm was he was, I mean he was he was a good no. character, but I don't know that I, I Well, I think that it's too I think too that until 
Stur- Sturm is not meant to be a major character no, no. until he goes to Salamnia. He gets his father's yeah. armor. That's right. what really makes Sturm at the peak of his arc. Yes. 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 Right now he right now he's just he right now he's a lost he's a lost teenager who is kind of he's tied in here because his mom's still still here and so he's he can't go anywhere and do anything because he's got to stay here and work and take mm-hmm. care of his mom this he is gonna make go this, find dad this is gonna make no sense I don't think but I the only reason I really like Sturm is just the look of Sturm the look of Sturm is like the bass you really, player you, from you, Spinal Tap. You really like the way uh, the, the guy in the book with no pictures looks? No, no. The, the, like the, no, the, the way the, they paint it, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like art. He is very 70s, so it makes it feel like a very 70s sword and sandal kind of book because he's just weirdly always in the background with his weird helmet and giant mustache. Yeah. I don't care anything but about But he doesn't Sturm. have those yet. No, he doesn't. Yeah. He yet. doesn't. He's just. He's got he's, just a little bit grown. of dirtiness. Yeah, on the yeah, he's grown by seven. <laughs> by well, how old would he be? Like eighteen ish. Now he's. I yeah, think, he's yeah. probably well, like eighteen. Well, but was he a little bit older? Because he was hanging out with Kit, yeah. so maybe now yeah. he's a little bit older. Who um, knows? But Who see, knows? the problem I have here is he's te- he's teenager. He is yeah. a he is a teenager, and so I have the feeling of this mustache, <laughs> and like I'm just seeing Matthew McConaughey, David Wooderson <laughs> from Dazed and Confused. I, 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 I only ever <laughs> see this, that with this one mustache that's not quite there yet. <laughs> I only ever see that one picture that you made up two years ago of him where yeah. where it was. Who was uh, that? Ted Nugent. Ted Nugent. Yeah, Ted that's, Nugent. That, that's who I see. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, that's I don't, I don't know. In, tr- in true Dungeons and Dweebs fashion, we're gonna round off an episode about Raceland, talking about Sturm. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so that, that's where we're cutting this one because we had a bunch of like chaff beforehand, oh, and then you know we're really we'll get that the real meaty stuff of the book really on the next the one. Meat of this we've episode. set up we've, we've set up All for the set. second half of the book here, and I think this sets up very well. For rolling into the second half of the book, right. when we get through and Ooh, get into yeah. this, get into um, our next episode, I'm gonna have some things to say about Margaret's yeah. writing. Where are we standing at the book at this point? Because I'll tell you where I'm standing at the book. I have loved the character yep. development. I am loving the characters of Caramon and Raceland more than I ever have, and I'm praising Margaret up and down. What I even have in my notes though is we are now like approaching over. Almost halfway. We're getting close to halfway through. I now need something more, right? Like now we need Get to set them on a quest. On with it. We need we need some sort of fighting battle, whatever it is. Will it come in these last three books? And see, I'm uh, again uh, just because of the amount of driving and the amount of other stuff that I do. I again audio booked this. Yeah. Um, the Audible book is actually pretty good. Oh, good. good. It, it is actually it has actually done pretty well. That's good. Um, is it old the, or is it new? Is it a new version or is it old? I, I think it's old, but it's like remastered. Okay. It is just one dude doing okay. voices. That was probably the. Yeah, that's probably some dude from prison doing that because I I know what <laughs> we learned it from another podcast from the last podcast on the left that they have uh, pe- people in prison can do audiobooks. Oh, they can that, read audiobooks nice. and okay. things like that. Probably more like LibriVox. But yeah. yeah. Does that guy say? It, well, yeah, it's probably, you know, it's it's probably country club prison. You know, it's oh, it, yeah, it's not it's real like prison. Manson so. isn't reading isn't reading an audiobook. Uh, although it'd be popular if he oh, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah it would. Uh, all right, so let me let me read to you about Raceland. <laughs> okay. So uh, um, <laughs> release date on the Audible audiobook January eighth, twenty thirteen. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so, but and it is one dude doing voices for like when the different characters speech. Right. Which, is, which isn't that's how bad. all books used to be. I'm the, pro- okay. the only problem I have with that is sometimes the female voices feel a little wonky. Yeah. Oh yeah. And especially when you're listening to them on double speed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but oh, yeah. Um, no. So the Audible book is good. I'm just I not a sponsor. My, my the the issue that I have here at this point, and the issue that I'll talk about when we get to final thoughts mm-hmm. at the end of next episode. Is I I want something to happen. Yep. Nothing. We've 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 had a little. We've had a little bullying. We've had m- the first three books of this could have been a book and a half to two book montage. Mm-hmm. Get him to be 16, 18, He's gonna gra- You know, get him to be sixteen, eighteen. Uh, where we're looking at this idea of him. You know, later on, he's gonna be teaching at the school before he takes his test, and he's gonna Spoilers. be he's gonna be doing a lot of these other things. But I want something big to happen. Mm-hmm. I want. And also something big to like more cement the friendship and more cement this idea. We get we get the we're gonna get the drops later on about Tasselhoff, Flint, and the three boys. Yeah. 
we're going to get those drops later on, mm-hmm. and, you know, that's good, uh, is going to fill in some of that. And I, I'm going to talk about how I really like that in yeah. the next episode. But right here, it's too much character development mm. for me. I This is the seventh book that I've read with both <laughs> characters. Eight. Eight for you. Eight. Oh, it is eight for you me. You read that middle I, book. Because I read the middle yeah. book. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But this is the eighth book that I've read about these characters. Yeah. I know where Raceland's going. Yeah. I, 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 I see where you're leading me to as to how he got there. Yeah. But again, I just it, it's it's a little too much for me mm-hmm. right, right. I, I, I was I was very happy with the reveals for me and how it made me rethink what I thought about other books. Um, so I think I was going off the high on that, but I'm with you, Club. Even in my notes, like I said, at this point I'm going, okay. So where are we going? What's what's the action? What is going to happen? And it's actually the issue that I'm having with the D with the D and D game that we're playing right now too. Is we're 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 in an information stage right now. I'm I'm not I, I don't have the patience. <laughs> I'm like my character, just going. Can I just go hit something? <laughs> I understand. Do it. I understand. Go, we're supposed it. to be getting all this information to go get stuff. Yeah. But we've been getting information for two sessions now. Just go. Hit Can something. we go fight something, please? Oh, holy just cow. go make a fight. <laughs> How long does a session last? It's coming. It's about three to four hours. Holy. <laughs> okay. Well. <laughs> we're, we're coming to a head club. Don't worry. I know. I know, but I'm just like, oh, Well, let great. me tell you, it better be good, Head, because it's been a long time great. coming. He was We're not an explicit <laughs> podcast. Oh, <laughs> Race, great. Race was picked on as a kid. He was avoided as a high schooler. He gained some essence of power in the school by becoming a teacher, even though he did, doesn't like people. Spoilers. Um, you know that, but I've enjoyed that part of the journey. The I have is, really I mean, enjoyed that. You know, I, enjoyed I, I, that. I, I am, I'm, I'm right here with Bob and Paul. I even. As much as I have complained in the past about books that talk about nothing, we're at least talking about nothing with characters that I know and that I care about. Right. Yes. That's the Had I, only if thing. If I didn't yeah. have all the backstory, it didn't have Maybe the that's why you can't Which start is with why this. you have to do yes. you have to be a liker of the the Chronicles the abil- before you come to this. And I the think. ability to pick up the Easter eggs that Margaret Weiss yep. is laying down in here. You wouldn't know. I, I, yeah, I would have no over. idea, and I'd be. I, I'm enjoying it. But you'd be like, I'm why? Just, why I'm is just, this Sturm just, guy I'm just showing waiting off? For you to go somewhere. Club, you are right. It needed a little bit more of like a. Like I, 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 I'm going to say a Harry Potter pacing where he goes to magic school and he's actually doing stuff. I do like yes. yeah. the groundwork she's laying. That like, hey, being a wizard's hard. Yes, but. I want to do something at yes, there. I, I will <laughs> say, though, if there was too much of a training montage of like, hey, you're in school, da, 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 we would be then complaining, saying that we don't no, have No, I agree. That there's not enough information or, about the things. Because that... Or give me more... give for, and take. We, we get virtually no information about what the classes actually are. Yeah, that's true. That's give me, true. Give me more information about the schooling, about, you know... The, the different steps that you're taking. Okay, it's, well, are, but I think it's we, boring. It All they're doing like is cabbage. They're writing, are we a writing one, words and books? Are we boring. a one-room schoolhouse? Yes, I think yes. so. I think so we have the six-year-olds next to the 18-year-olds? Yep. Yes, they learn from each other. Well, no, because after, after <laughs> oh, a while... Oh, in groups, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They learn from each other in groups, collective uh, grouping um, and, well, and it's teaming. They, they weren't, they're not actually groups. They're just teams. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> so, yeah, it, I, I would have liked to see more of, like, what the actual schooling is right. being entailed in. I'm still enjoying myself. Yeah. I still love this universe. Yeah, um, I agree. You know, I'm still in. I'm just... Pick up the pace. Yep. No, pick no, up the you're pace. Not wrong. Yeah. yeah, I'm with you. I, I think Klob and check. I'm Klob. <laughs> Whatever. My name's yeah, on that's, Facebook. That's yeah. um, I think I am I'm more with it. Like my frustration was that I, I'm actually I've loved it right to here, but this was the part where you know you end a book, sometimes that's where you choose to like get up, do something else, right? Yeah. So I ended book three, getting up, going like, okay, well, we got that all out of the way. Mm-hmm. So now what? You know? And I will say, not necessarily a spoiler, but we've got chapters and chapters yet. Spoilers. Of nothing really happening. Spoilers. <laughs> so I was, I my letdown will start coming here a little bit, definitely, Club, in okay. the next episode. Yep. Yep. Well, there it is. First half, book one, Raceland Chronicles. Hey, all right. Hey, if you want to join the conversation, please talk to us on Facebook. Facebook's still the best way to go. Talk to us on Facebook. Throw things out there. Call us ninnies. Whatever you want to do. Make a post to Facebook. We'll post it. Right? Approved. As we'll approve, we'll approve it as long as it's not. Subscribe on YouTube. You'll yeah. be getting a lot yes. more of us on there. It's just, God, rendering videos takes forever. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Rend- and- rendering and then uploading. 
Oh my God. Yeah. And if you want to share some things with friends uh, pretty soon here, our vi- our original three episodes will be on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, well, I, don't, I don't have an iPhone and I don't want to download Podbean. Well, good news. It's on YouTube. Yeah. Listen. You can, you can, you can push us on your friends. Talk yeah. to your friends. Um, now that it, now that uh, iTunes is splitting up and splitting up into the different into the That's three what it, That's formats. what you're talking about. Yes. That was the thing. Oh, yeah. okay. That was okay. the thing. That was the thing <laughs> that I'm like, why do you know about that? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, that, that's not a big deal. It's just like iTunes has, has become too big of an application, so it's splitting up into three smaller ones. That's all that's which happening. It, which, which it pretty well, they much give us done chapter anyways. breaks. That's all I want. They, they haven't said anything, but they are, podcasts are getting some love. Good. That's all I know. Yep. Okay. Because Apple's secretive. Go, so get get on get on Podbean. Get on uh, iTunes while it still exists. Get on the <laughs> podcast apps. Um, that we're on. Give us a review. Um, go in there. That really helps us. It helps us. As long as it's positive. We're going if you don't like us, just go away. <laughs> and don't, don't, don't give your opinion. Actually, no, I know. Go on. Call me pretentious again. What up? <laughs> I love it. I thrive off this. I don't. I like Raceland curl up in a little <laughs> fetal position in the corner of my bed. They hate me. I just, I does your wife way. have to come I, in and just comfort you? Yes, she does. I, I am curl. suckered by Lorana. I just, <laughs> see, I'll just get drunk at 5 o'clock in the morning, make a fake to come, come after you. <laughs> 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 oh, and on that bombshell. So on that bombshell, please again listen up. Tell your friends about us. Tell your enemies about us. Tell your mom about us. Whoever. Hey, let's get some sh- more downloads. Oh, your mom already going. knows about hey, me. Shout out, shout out, <laughs> California, the state with the most downloads from us. Woo! What the hell oh, is I should, going on? I shouldn't have said anything about barefoot hippies. <laughs> No, no that's, that's Washington. <laughs> All right, so hit us up. Guys, um, we love you. She's, she's got another set of drinks coming for us. Let's take this quick, and then I need to be off like a prom dress. I hear she got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you for listening to this episode of Dungeons and Dweebs. There's even more adventuring to be had at our website, dungeonsanddweebs.com. We would love to hear from you. You can email us at dungeonsanddweebspodcast at gmail.com. You can also find Dungeons and Dweebs on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Find all those links at dungeonsanddweebs.com. If you've enjoyed the podcast, please help spread the word by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes. The music for Dungeons and Dweebs is Fatal Fight by Royalty Free Kings and can be found at their website, royaltyfreekings.com. Dungeons and Dweebs is a Tim Gilbert media production. Copyright 2017, all rights reserved. And no part of the show can be reproduced, repurposed, or redistributed without the expressed written permission of Tim Gilbert Media.